ideologies, or ethnicity. It's an endless series of proxy battles fought by mercenaries and machines. War, and its consumption of life, has become a well-oiled machine. War has changed. ID tag soldiers carry ID tag weapons, use ID tag gear, Nanomachines inside their bodies enhance and regulate their abilities. Genetic control, information control, emotion control, battlefield control. Everything is monitored and kept under control. War has changed. The age of deterrence has become the age of control. All in the name of averting catastrophe from weapons of mass destruction. And he who controls the battlefield controls history. War has changed. When the battlefield is under total control, war becomes routine.
Sonic. We've got to go. We've got an old friend waiting for you. Otacon. The test results. Proteome analysis was positive. But the mRNA analysis turned up negative. The wrinkled skin, the hardened arteries. Your early aging symptoms look like classic Werner syndrome. But none of the tests were able to pinpoint the cause. So? Well, judging by how rapidly the aging has progressed, I'd say... A year at best, right? Snake, let's try another doctor. <laughs> it won't make any difference. I'm not an ordinary man to begin with. Not to mention Fox die. You're right. But we don't know where Naomi is. Not a colonel anymore, Snake. I figured the only place I'd see you dressed like that would be at your daughter's wedding. What are you doing these days? I'm working for an organization under the UN Security Council. The analysis and assessment staff of the PMC Oversight and Inspection Committee. Yeah, I remember the resolution being passed a few years ago. Snake, I uh, came across some information in my work. Huh? We found him. In the Middle East. <laughs> I'll explain along the way. We've got to stop him. Now. Before it's too late. Liquid's made his move. We found him. He's preparing to unleash his insurrection. Liquid is lying in wait in a Middle Eastern war zone. Track him down. today? Solidus must have taken the day off. Seven, eight, nine, two, five, nine, oh, three, six, oh, seven, three, three, oh, five, three, oh, five, four, eight, eight, two, oh, four, six, six, five, two, The Manhattan incident triggered a serious public backlash. Now the U.S. has to think twice before intervening militarily in other countries' affairs. This has fueled a push towards military privatization, with PMCs at the heart of that movement. PMCs? Private military companies? That's right. PMCs have no basis in nations or ideologies. They are private enterprises, driven by profit. In addition to dispatching mercenaries to war zones, they secure weapons and train local soldiers. They're contractors for war itself, and business is good. Their clientele includes developed nations like the U.S., rebel factions looking to seize power by force, smaller countries lacking armies of their own. 
even terrorist groups. They're in the Americas, Asia, the South Pacific, Europe, Africa, the Middle East. The rise of the PMC has spawned a war by proxy, and it's spreading across the globe. They're, they're, they're... Sonny, we'll eat them later, okay? Every age has its mercenary. These PMCs are nothing new. We've been dealing with them since before the turn of the century. No, Snake. They're nothing like the mercenaries of the past. They're ready. Sorry, I'm a little busy right now. The Pentagon's new battlefield control system has produced a decisive difference between hired guns and the PMCs of today. The system was developed by Arms Tech Security. Arms Tech? You mean AT Corp? Yeah. In recent years, AT Corp has shifted focus from weapons development to security tools. And since the establishment of AT Security, business has been booming. The system makes it possible to integrate not only micro-level information on individual soldiers and units, but also macro-level information about field conditions and order of battle. So they finally achieved total real-time battlefield control. That's right. And as a result, the global presence of PMCs has grown. Explosively. The truth is, the rise of system control PMCs has led to a dramatic decline in civilian casualties and human rights violations on the battlefield. A cleaner, safer battlefield. <laughs> Makes for nice propaganda. more. State governments and rebel groups can't match the maintenance price of standing forces. PMCs, by comparison, are reliable, easy to use. It wasn't long before everybody had them on the payroll. And, as a result, Regular armies began to decline worldwide. It's hard to believe, I know, but PMCs are beginning to overtake conventional armies in terms of scale. Nowadays, it's the PMCs who serve as standard battalions. They already make up 60% of all combatant forces in zones of conflict. 60%? The fact is, the world now depends largely on PMCs for waging its wars. I thought it was the UN that authorized the PMCs in the first place. The US abstained from voting on that resolution. In effect, Washington was endorsing PMCs without ever revealing its true intentions. Until they got wind of the uprising, that is. The US has exported too much military power. And now, she's paying the price. That's exactly it. America has now turned war into a form of economic activity. Analysts are calling it the war economy, in that it's picking up the slack for the downward sloping oil market. But I, for one, don't intend to simply stand by and watch it happen. For the PMCs, market expansion entails fanning the flames of war. It means more refugees. War orphans. Child soldiers. Yes. Even as PMC soldiers get more specialized, they're also getting younger. Mercenaries spun off from state armies, unmanned weapons, child soldiers, proxy battles in a new Cold War. There are hundreds of PMCs in business worldwide, and their numbers are growing. Currently, five of them are big enough to be labeled global powers, two in the US and one each in the UK, France, and Russia. 
Reconnaissance has revealed that those five PMCs are run by a dummy corporation that acts as a single mother company. This mother company embodies the five largest PMCs. Her name is Outer Heaven. Outer Heaven? You mean? That's right. It's Liquid. Liquid? He's taken command of this immense army and is now preparing to unleash an insurrection. I watched him die. His will lives on, in the body of the man once known as Ocelot. He aims to fan the flames of war even higher, to create the perfect world once envisioned by Big Boss. The one world in which soldiers will always have a place. He must be stopped before it's too late. Do you understand, Snake? Any means necessary. Just stop Liquid's insurrection. Even if it means... killing him. You want Liquid dead? Isn't that right, Colonel? I'm sorry. I know. This isn't justice. It's a covert assignment. A hired hit. A wet works op targeting the head of a major multinational corporation. <sighs> Why me? Because of the military might of the PMCs, and the effect they have on the economy. War is to the 21st century what oil was to the 20th. The pillar that supports the global economy. You'll recall a rather alarming report issued by that American think tank during the Cold War. One that described a new model for perpetual war. What we're facing now is a whole new ball game. Iron Mountain's Delphi technique. That was fiction. It existed only on paper. The reality is far more serious. The global community is concerned, but they're all too afraid of the war economy collapsing to do anything about it. The UN, too. Huh. Sounds pretty self-serving to me. Snake. This mission isn't an order from Washington. Not like the old days. And it's not something the UN can officially sanction, either. But we can't just look the other way, while Liquid plots this insurrection. If we fail to act, he'll become the greatest threat the world has ever faced. Snake. You're the only man I can trust. Fine. Let's hear it. Our intelligence on Liquid's uprising originally comes via reports from U.S. Special Forces, who were mobilized after we at the U.N. reported our findings. They're tracking Liquid's movements. About 18 hours ago, he was spotted in the Middle East. There's a rebel army in the Middle East, made up of ethnic minorities, waging civil war against the regime in power. The core of that regime's army is provided by one of the PMCs under Liquid's control. What about the rebels? The local militias have hired small numbers of operators as trainers and field commanders. And of course, they've got help from the local PMCs. Right. A proxy war between hired guns. <sighs> PMC versus PMC. A quagmire of war. All too typical victims of the new world economy. Snake, you'll be sneaking into the conflict zone via transport truck 
Disguised as one of the Rebel Army's hired operators. Your first objective is to make contact with our informants, Rat Patrol Team Zero One. They'll be expecting you. Rat Patrol, huh? They sound sneaky. They're a special forces team assigned to the Army's PMC Investigation Unit, CID. CID? Real rats of the Army? No. I can vouch for them personally. Friends of yours? You could say that. Transportation to the area will be provided under cover of a UN humanitarian aid mission, with support from the US military. From there on, though, you'll get no protection and no guarantees from anyone. And you must not leave behind any evidence of your involvement in the area, let alone that of the UN. If word of this ever leaked out, it would spark a global firestorm. Snake. Do this for me. Will you terminate Liquid? I'm not like the PMCs. I don't need your money. Thank you. But if you're going to spark something, spark this. Fine. I'll start my own fire. Прохождение и монтаж BF Games. This is Snake. Do you read me? What's the situation? I'm just inside the city limits. This place is crawling with lizards. Ah, AT Corps' unmanned bipedal weapons. Officially designated Irving by the US military. They've spread like wildfire among the PMCs. There are more of those things now in service than tanks. They've got tough armor plating and are highly agile to boot. Your best bet is to stay out of their sights. Unmanned. Pretty soon they'll have put living, breathing soldiers out of work. Even so, that's an awful lot of gecko for this scenario. Their numbers exceed the war price for that region. It must have something to do with Liquid's arrival on the scene. You really think he's here? You'll have to find the Army's operatives and ask them yourself. Oh, and Snake, I went ahead and used the Mark II to scout out the area before your arrival. You'll find it up ahead. Mark II? It's a remote mobile terminal. Sonny and I built it. The Mark II will provide you with a map of the area as well as any battle situation data. You should find it before you do anything else. Okay, got it. The rendezvous point is marked on your map. I'll be waiting for you there. Avoid unnecessary combat whenever possible. In this war, neither side is your enemy. There's no point whatsoever in you getting into a fight. Got it?
Snake. Snake, it's me. Huh? Otacon. Sorry to keep you waiting, Snake. Allow me to introduce Metal Gear Mark II. Metal Gear? That's right. Just like Rex. But this gear's not a weapon. It's a remote mobile terminal designed to provide you with operational support. Where are you? I'm in the Nomad. Where else? I'll be watching you through the Mark II. Mm, wish I was good with gadgets. Hey, I'll be with you in spirit. Anyway, because you had to dress up as a militiaman, I had the Mark II bring you some goodies. Starting with this. Put it on your left eye. Looks like an eye patch. I call it the solid eye. It's an all-purpose goggle that displays radar images and other data in 3D. You can also switch it over to light amplifying night vision. The rebels are out there. It looks like they've got the government's PMC troops beat, at least in numbers. And this is their own turf. Snake, I know this is a sneaking mission, but you'll need to protect yourself. Uh. An operator. I installed a suppressor. And here's a tranquilizer gun. Thoughtful. It predates the implementation of the system. By some miracle, it was never recycled. It's getting tough these days finding decent guns that aren't controlled. You coming? Of course. I'll follow you wherever you go. Like this. I'll activate stealth so it doesn't attract any attention. If you need it, just bring up the start button menu. Got it. Snake, the informants who said they saw a liquid here should be a little further up. Head for the rendezvous point. I've placed a mark on the radar in the upper right corner of the solid eye. It's a war zone out there. Stay on your toes. Pretty sweet, huh? <laughs> oh, hold it. Watch where you pointing that thing. <laughs> Who are you? Neither enemy nor friend. <laughs> Voila. You're not with the militia, and you're not PMC. I'm a weapons wholesaler. All shapes, all sizes. But there's no need to worry, because all my shit's been laundered. Laundered? <laughs> you see, I take ID guns like the PMCs use and make some mods. Then you can use them without having to match IDs. In other words, I'm a gun launderer. You can call me Drebin. Drebin? Yeah, they use that for all of us. There are more of you. All over the world. 
Not that I ever met any of them personally. Me, I'm Drebin number 893. You ain't a registered PMC employee, are you? Consider it a welcome gift. Take it. The M4, the official carbine model used by the U.S. Army, developed from the M16 service rifle. This one's a top of the line model, real popular with the big PMC. Precision, not like that government issue shit. It's uh, free floating, of course. Relax, that barrel's clean. Is the Hyder CQC compatible? The beauty of this sucker is that it's got a lot of customizable parts. Change it up the way you want to meet your everyday needs. Flip up sight, rail system, not bad. Yeah, well, you know, I get a lot of noobs around here. And if you need them, I got a wide selection of aftermarket parts as well. The frame's pretty rigid. No rattle. Go ahead. Give her a squeeze. Hmm. Huh. I can't pull the trigger. Really? That's weird. What's weird? Wait, I got it. I bet you're using an older generation of nano machines. Older generation? Sometimes they don't really jive with the new system. Seriously, who are you? Oh, slow down. <clears throat> oh, yes. My day job's working at AT Security. I'm in charge of production control. So I get my hands on all the ID chips before they're even registered. Have a sip. Mm -mm. It's a side of AT the public don't see. From the looks of it, you ain't with any state army. But you ain't exactly green, neither. You've got last gen nano machines. So I'm guessing, former US Army, <laughs> I don't know what you're here for. But you want to be well equipped, am I right? So, can we talk business or what? You won't regret it. What's your take on Emoticon? I don't particularly like the guy. But it looks like we'll need his help with those ID guns. Sonny's been doing a little sleuthing for us. Drebin, a well-known gun launderer in war economy circles. He's a businessman who deals mainly in selling black market firearms to small PMCs and local militia. Somalia, the Balkans, Lebanon, Darfur, Chechnya, Timor, Peru, the Punjab, Kashmir, Colombia. This guy really gets around. How's he pull it off anyway? You can create a non-ID gun by replacing the ID recognition chip with a counterfeit version. This enables you to bypass the ID recognition process and use the gun. The problem is that there's still a record of the chip being replaced on the system side. Drebin's an employee of AT Security. He must have connections on the inside erasing records for him. You think the Patriots are involved somehow? I'm not so sure. If the Patriots were running the system from behind the scenes, then a weasel like Drebin would be a real pain in their collective ass. Can he be trusted? Remember, Drebin's a green collar. He makes his living off the war economy. He doesn't let emotions get in the way of business, and he never gets his own hands dirty. The only thing he trusts is money. I share your concern, but what if we keep him at arm's length? Use him only to get intel and the supplies we need. Keep it strictly business. All right. So, we ready to make a deal or what? <laughs> Okay, then. Let's talk business. This is a war zone. There's product coming in here by the truckload. 
and you'll be picking up a lot of guns in the field, I'm sure. Whatever guns you don't need, I'll take and buy them off you. That'll earn you points you can cash in for services. Like what? I'll launder your ID guns. No more locks. And I can also sell you the guns I've got in stock. Let me show you. To ensure you can use non-ID guns, I'm gonna have to suppress the old nanomachines you got in you. Otherwise, they'll interfere with the system. Here, stick yourself with this. It's full of suppressor nanomachines. Relax, it won't hurt. You're scared of needles or something? You can use non-ID guns, no problem. Hey, be nice to our guest. Step outside. Boo. See? No problem. From now on, when you pick up an ID gun that says lock, you just let me know. You name it, I can launder it. Of course, it'll cost you. The going rate depends on the war price at the time. <clears throat> Man, I gotta give this shit a rest. Looks like you're doing pretty well for yourself. You might say that. What with the war economy and all, and the system clamping down on things. System codes are the law now, and control's essentially absolute, paving the way for fat profits if you're willing to bend the law. The man keeps on growing thanks to the war economy. I sell ID guns to the PMCs and state armies, and naked guns to terrorist groups and paramilitaries. And these ID guns can't be sold on the black market. System's practically a license for us arms dealers to print money. Privatizing the military has made the PMCs big and bloated. The fatter the PMCs get, the line between civilian and soldier is gonna get real blurry. Sooner or later, the whole damn human race is gonna be green collars. More like, we're all gonna be fighting proxy wars. But hey, this war economy puts the food on my table. You're a green collar too, aren't you? Yeah, it's in your eyes. You've seen a lot of combat. What makes you think you know me? Nothing to be ashamed of. I'm the same way. I grew up here too. I got no interest in the outside world. All right then. If you need me, holla. We specialize in speedy service. Catch my drift.
I know what you're thinking, but Drebin does have a point. The world depends on war, on the war economy. Can you imagine what would happen if war just disappeared overnight? Otacon, you and Drebin both mentioned something about a war price earlier. What did you mean by that? It's a kind of market price, one that fluctuates according to demand, not only for PMCs and military industry, but for the production, distribution, and energy supply networks that support them. <laughs> it's been growing by leaps and bounds, and investors are really starting to take notice. As the fighting in any given area becomes increasingly intense and prolonged, the war price goes up. No doubt Drebin's rates are linked to that war price. The longer and bloodier a battle becomes, the higher service prices are gonna get. To put it another way, the quieter things are, the better the bargains. Snake, we'll use the Mark II to deal with Drebin from here on out. He's what you might call a street vendor. The Mark II can act as a kind of delivery boy, and connect you with him. I'm adding a Drebin menu item to the Mark II's weapon menu. Whenever you pick up multiple units of the same weapon, any extras will automatically be sold to Drebin. Any ammo that's inside gets added to your cache. In other words, you keep the ammo, and the weapon itself gets traded to Drebin for points. I see. You can then use the points you've earned to unlock ID guns or buy new weapons. Sounds good. We should assume Drebin has other agents collecting guns for him besides you, Snake. You know, freelance green collars who collect weapons in exchange for services? Guess I'll have to rely on him for now. Okay. Now go meet up with our informants, Rat Patrol. there. Go, go away! I'm not done yet! Okay, Snake, hurry to the rendezvous point. Your radar is marked with which way to go. Drop your weapon! Drop your weapon! Alright. Here. E easy now. Don't move! 
You haven't even taken the safety off, rookie. Careful. I'm no rookie. I'm a ten-year vet. How the hell did you ever survive ten years? Don't move! CQC. Real big boss, huh? Lower your weapon! Slowly now. I wouldn't try anything funny if I were you. Fox. Snake? Snake! Meryl! Is that you? What happened to your face? Accelerated aging. They don't know the cause. Oh my god. Meryl, you're my informant in the U.S. military. And you must be the inspector sent by the U.N. Commander! Sorry. This is Rat Patrol Team 01. We're with the CID, one of the bodies investigating PMC activity. First hounds, now rats. Here, you can have this back. It's been four days since Liquid arrived in the area. And since then, this woman's been with him. She doesn't look like a combatant. Probably some kind of advisor. Maybe a scientist. So one unit. Why? Something wrong with that? Here, I'll introduce you to the team. That's Ed, our radio man and sniper. The sleeping giant is Jonathan. <laughs> Don't stand behind him. He hates it when people go around his back. And finally... Johnny. Everybody just calls him Akiba. Commander, I've finished installing the sensors. <sighs> okay, Akiba. Anyway. You're all grown up. Maybe it's because someone taught me well. A certain legendary hero, who suddenly disappeared. Uh. You quit the unit. 
Me? <laughs> I never gave up on you. Or on Foxhound. Back then, I just wanted you to accept me. I wanted you to turn around and see who I was. But I've put the past behind. I'm done playing little love games. So, what are you here for? Threat assessment. The PMCs. Really? Because I heard a rumor there's an assassin out there targeting their leader. Well, that's some rumor. I'm only here because the UN wants me to assess the impact and effects of PMCs on their refugee protection efforts. That's all? More than enough for a retired vet like me. I know he's plotting an insurrection. But as long as AT Security's system is in place, there's no way he'll succeed. How can you be so sure? They've implemented a system that monitors in real time every single soldier engaged in combat action, whether he's State Army or PMC. Each individual soldier has been fully ID tagged with nanomachines injected into their bodies for that purpose. The nanomachines keep track of the soldiers and their real time personal data 24 hours a day. They monitor each man's position, movement speed, reserve ammo, firing accuracy, wounds, rations, water intake and supply, sweat secreted, heart rate, blood pressure and sugar levels, oxygen. All the data gathered on body condition, on sensory organ data showing pain and fear, data on every internal response within the body. All of it is collected by an AI at the system's core. This data is monitored at HQ to enable command to make quicker, more precise, more rational decisions. It also enables crisis management for each individual soldier. It's being used by the US military, by state armies and allied countries, by PMCs. Even police agencies are starting to adopt it. Unless they agree to implement the system, PMCs aren't permitted to send troops anywhere. You've got these system nanomachines in you too. Of course. Our unit plays by the rules, same as everybody else. It was creepy at first, knowing you're being watched 24-7, but I've gotten used to it. It gives us a lot of advantages in the field, too. We get a clearer picture of what's going on around us, so there's less confusion during missions. And our nanomachines communicate with each other, making teamwork a lot smoother. And that's not all the system does for us. It's also a security guarantee against the PMCs. Security guarantee. That's right. The PMCs are combat groups without states or ideologies. They're not fighting out of nationalism or for a cause. They don't care why the war is being fought. They're just bodies fighting on someone else's behalf. They're mercenaries, a commodity. So it's easy to imagine them betraying their clients by joining the enemy or refusing to fight or committing humanitarian atrocities. To keep these things in check, they ensured that no one can use firearms or military vehicles without the proper system ID. It's true for every piece of equipment out there. So even if the PMCs tried to mount a terrorist attack or coup d'etat, their weapons and equipment would automatically be locked out. They wouldn't be able to move, attack, or engage in combat of any kind. And there's more. All the data on their position, personnel, and combat strength is leaked to us by the nanomachines. Even if they managed to circumvent the system by getting the nanomachines out of each soldier's body, they'd be losing their IDs in the process, so they couldn't use their weapons. And the Patriots are behind this. La le lu le lo. What are you talking about? Never mind. So this system is foolproof, huh? Completely. They call it SOP. Sons of the Patriots. The AI that controls it is a tightly guarded secret, both at Arms Tech Security, where it was developed, and at the Pentagon. There's no way a third party could get control of it. I just met a guy who said he can launder ID guns. The system does have holes. There can't be more than a few hundred of those gun launderers. It's just a grassroots movement. It's not like they can affect the entire PMC war machine. 
Anyway, Liquid would have had to register as a PMC in the system to assemble an army that massive. His PMCs might even exceed the U.S. military in terms of numbers, but as long as they're registered, their soldiers' activities are constantly being monitored. So long as the U.S. responds immediately when Liquid makes his move, we can take them down by force. By force, huh? When Arsok heard about Liquid's plans, they sent us to sniff around the PMCs. Even with this SOP keeping an eye on things, there are always trouble spots to deal with in the field. Disorderly conduct, disobeying orders, contract violations. We act as backup for the system by monitoring the soldiers. PMC inspections are always carried out on the battlefield. That's why we're authorized to carry and use weapons. We've lost five inspection teams in the past few months alone. They were all undercover inside Liquid's PMCs. Then, if you got caught... We'd be exterminated like rats. But we're smarter than that. We've been mingling with the PMCs. And after three months of searching God knows how many battlefields, we finally tracked him down. When we reported that we'd found Liquid, our superiors ordered us to provide the UN investigators with intel. <laughs> but I didn't know it'd be you. Didn't the Colonel tell you he was sending me? Colonel? Don't tell me it's Campbell! Yeah. He put you up to this? You didn't know. Uh, you've got to be kidding! You expect me to work with my uncle? Meryl! This is bullshit! He's not my father. violation of the need-to-know role. Then... why are you still calling him uncle? You're still calling him Colonel. He's your father. As far as I'm concerned, we're still uncle and niece. I will never forgive that womanizing piece of shit. Meryl! He, uh... remarried. Really? His new wife's about my age. I hear she's even got a kid. It's as if he's given up on making up with his own daughter. Men. Selfish, egotistical pigs. Commander. What is it? There's 20 of them, and they're not from that PMC praying mantis either. It's the fraud. It's private troops. Oh, crap. This is not good. Oh. Oh. Uh, were you being followed? No. Akiba! Uh. They might have seen the reflection off my scope lens. Whoa, wait, 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 hang on. You guys think it was my fault? Oh, 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 no. Oh, it wasn't my fault, I swear. It wasn't my fault. Oh, man. Oh, look, I... What? Dumbass. We're moving out. Meryl, where's Liquid? At a camp up ahead. I'll fill you in later, if we're still alive.
follow me. Contact. These guys are with Liquid's private army. Shoot first, think later. We'll use the stairs and get out through the back door on the first floor. We'll change the route as necessary. I'm on point. Stay close. Got it? Got it. Got it. Akiba, breathe deep. Got it. We've got a real live legendary hero with us. Try not to choke. <laughs> Move! The nanomachine network inside each unit member's body lets us share each other's senses. They can see what I see. And it helps control pain. Is that part of the system, too? With SOP, my team can literally operate as one. Well, except for a certain someone who's not much of a team player. So, what do you think? Is your age of heroes finally over? <laughs> I'm no hero. Never was. Never will be. You haven't changed at all, Snake. But... Your body... Are you gonna be alright? This get-up doubles as a muscle suit. 
I can still get around. Liquid's camp is up ahead. I'll mark it on your map. Thanks. Akiba! One man's blunder can compromise the whole team. I'm sorry, Commander. Be careful, Snake. where liquid is yeah i'm confirming the location it's to the north of where you are meryl's really changed hasn't she snake she's a lot more self-assured <laughs> i wonder how much of that has to do with the system the senses you used to develop through extended training and experience can now be obtained without even working for them seems once you're under the system's control you don't even need experience at all it even beats that vr training that was all the rage a few years back yeah. The growing need for PMCs has led to the creation of a more reliable, cost-effective supply of elite soldiers. It's also made the child soldier phenomenon more problematic than ever. Can the nanomachines do anything to counteract post-traumatic stress disorder? Good question. They might provide a degree of psychological stability. You'd think so? That geek kid, Akiba, he was really starting to lose it. And technologically, the system should be able to optimize each soldier's personality traits. And that big guy... He didn't seem to be feeling any pain at all. Augmenting the soldier's existing experience and psychological fortitude. But a soldier's gotta have more than that. The times have changed, Snake. Just like Meryl. <sighs> Snake, hurry to the PMC camp. Based on what Meryl told us, Liquid should be there. Okay, time to head for the surface.
I knew it. Snake, you're here to kill Liquid, aren't you? That's the mission. Are you going to stop me? My mission is to inspect the PMCs. I'm not in a position to take action. All I can do is stand by and watch. I can't help you, understand? I'm a peacekeeper, here to keep order. Understood.
Snake. If you won't be a prisoner to fate. Then go. Fulfill your destiny. from the dead? I don't remember the sun being so flat. <laughs> Sorry. I'll dig in right away, Sonny. And would you make some for Snake, too? Okay. Uh, uh, hey. None for me, Sonny. MC soldiers all went haywire en masse, too. I thought it might be a form of ADS, but I didn't detect any aberrations in the EM. <coughs> you were lucky. Some of those guys' hearts simply stopped. <sighs> He's there. Naomi was 
has a liquid side. Otacon, did you see her? No, but you're right. Naomi was there. I found traces of the DNA in that syringe you were holding. So it was Naomi. Why? Here, let me show you something. Right after it all happened, I got a video mail from Naomi. It was sent to my old address. Um, here you go. Uh, thanks, Sonny. They're delicious. Like I know how to cook. Hey, check this out. The data's been quarantined. No viruses. The voice print matches Naomi's. And I'm fairly confident the video isn't digitally synthesized either. Snake, I'll make this quick. I'm in South America. I've been captured and forced to do research. It's liquid. Liquid's goal is to seize control of SOP, the sons of the Patriot system that controls the soldiers. To do that, he needs to analyze the nanomachine structure and find out how they communicate with one another. The nanomachines currently in use by militaries and PMCs are third generation. But their design is derived from that of the first generation. The basic technology is still the same. First generation? I was the one who created the first generation. A nanomachine colony, part of which was Fox Die. Nine years ago, at Shadow Moses, I injected it into your body, Snake. The technology used in Fox Die was incorporated, inherited really, by SOP. That's why Liquid has me helping him hijack the system. Because I know how Fox Dye works. Please, you must rescue me. Liquid's found a loophole he can use to get into the system. Preparations for his insurrection are nearly complete. No time to waste. Snake, hurry! Naomi sent her location data in a separate file. What the hell is that? It's a type of encrypted data. Sunny decoded it for us. Remember now? This is data from the Soliton radar you used at Shadow Moses. I'm guessing Naomi wants us to know the message truly is from her. Sending the map data in Soliton radar format. Pretty clever. And Mei Ling's helping us out from Hawaii. The data she sent was 4D sound data. I don't know how Soliton radar works, but... All I had to do was change the audio data into video data. It was easy. This Naomi lady seems pretty cool. <laughs> it's Campbell. 
Snake, as you'll recall, following the Shadow Moses incident nine years ago, Naomi was detained by the authorities. But someone arranged for her escape. Yeah, I hear they added that to my rap sheet, too. I suspect it was actually Liquid. He must have taken her prisoner himself and forced her to do research at his facility in South America. Chances are, the location Naomi gave us is the site of Liquid's main base. But there's no actual proof. There's an ongoing skirmish between the new regime put into power by PMCs and a rebel army formed by remnants of the old one. The Rebels have hired a small-scale local PMC of their own to stir things up. It's the quintessential example of a war economy market. The new regime is still in shambles, so it's really Pierre Ramamont, one of the PMCs under outer heaven control, that's calling the shots. You might say it's a perfect place for Liquid to make his haven. Or it could be a trap. True, but even so, the payoff would greatly aid our efforts. I had Sonny trace the origin of Naomi's mail. The address is fake, but Sonny was able to track the message back through its proxies based on access date timestamps and data transfer volumes. Apparently, the message originated from a server in South America. I wouldn't exactly call it 100% credible, though. Colonel. Where's Meryl? Well, I know she left the Middle East in pursuit of Liquid. I'm sure our sock is on to us by now. We can't chase that line too far. Huh. Which leaves Naomi as our only lead. I've secured you landing clearance at El Dorado International Airport. You'll be acting as a UN inspector. South America. That's about 20 hours from here. Then what's the plan? I'll arrange for them to get you a 4x4. The location Naomi gave us, the PMC's base, is in a mountainous region surrounded by forests. Use the 4x4 to get as close as possible to the PMC security perimeter. From there on, Snake, it'll be a solo sneaking mission. Right. Hmm. Rebels are still pitched in battle against the PMCs. The commotion should help you slip into the facility unnoticed. 20 hours until we land. Got it. I'll have a look at the documents. Maybe I'll even have a smoke while I still can. Patriots, you mean? The data we got from Arsenal Gear was a load of crap. Twelve founders who have all been dead for a hundred years. Give me a break. We know they exist today. If the purpose of this battlefield control system is to control IDs, it fits in with their plans perfectly. Seizing control of the world's ID systems and then using them to manipulate the economy and information flow. For the Patriots, that's the ultimate prize. You might say the Patriots are the embodiment of the war economy. Everything that Solidus feared five years ago, it's all come to pass. The Patriots are trying to protect their power, 
their own interests by controlling the digital flow of information. Now, with the media and global opinion under complete control, not even the UN can stand up to them. Then Liquid's insurrection is against them. Exactly. It would seem as though Liquid has taken up Big Boss's cause. An age of persistent universal warfare. A world where mercenaries are free from domination. In a sense, the outer heaven Big Boss envisioned is already a living reality. You mean the PMCs and their war business? Right now, Liquid is a slave to the Patriots, forced to fight their proxy wars for them. He must be dying to break free of their spell. Beneath the surface, a new Cold War is brewing between Liquid and the Patriots over who will survive. And no matter who wins, the world has no future. Until we stop Liquid and destroy the system, we'll never be free. Snake, what we call peace is an equilibrium kept in check by the war economy. Destroying the system means wiping out the information society, the end of modern civilization. Like it or not, we may have no choice but to protract the system. Snake, here's what we know about the current battle. Rebel guerrilla units are advancing on the base of the government PMC troops. That base appears to be Liquid Safe House. According to Naomi's data, she's being held prisoner inside the compound. That's where she is. Assuming the data is correct. And one more thing. What now? The government PMC troops have been operating at high altitudes. We have reports that it's starting to upset the balance of the nano-machine control system. Meaning? Meaning the low-blood oxygen content seems to have an effect on their nano-machines, giving them a slight edge in battle. Be careful. Steer clear of altitude sickness. Got it.
Archon. What the hell? That was Vamp. I'm sure of it. I'll never forget that face. Those were PMC soldiers with him. Is he involved in Liquid's plan? We watched him die in Manhattan. Damn it, he won't leave us alone. Snake, could Vamp be immortal? Not a chance. This is the real world, not some fantasy game. I swear, the next time he shows up... Not now, Otacon. Right. I know. Snake, according to satellite imagery procured by Mei Ling, the facility where Naomi's being held is to the north, along a mountain road. I'm sending the location to your map. Mei Ling? What's she up to these days? Taking command of the Missouri, apparently. The Missouri? That's a World War II battleship. The museum contract in Hawaii expired some time ago. I hear it's now being used as a virtual training vessel. No kidding. Not for actual combat training, of course, but rather to get sailors used to seamanship on an analog vessel. Or so I hear. After the mess at Shadow Moses, Mei Ling kinda got put out to pasture. Hmm. Even so, making captain at her age, that's pretty impressive. Rumor has it she caught the eye of some lecherous old admiral who got her promoted. She always did have a thing for her older men. Hmm. Maybe it's too early to retire after all. Thinking of taking a little training on an analog vessel, Snake? Huh. No. At this point, I've got no need for any more training. Fair enough. Listen, Snake. When you get there, remember, the conflict between the PMCs and the Rebels has nothing to do with your mission. There's no reason for you to get involved or take sides. That said, creating some sort of impact on the battlefield could produce better conditions for sneaking. The Rebels are targeting the facility being used by the PMCs as a base. This is more or less the same spot where Naomi's being held. If you aid the Rebels, they might get rid of some of the PMCs and help carve a path for you to sneak in. That freak I just saw, with the tentacles, was it using the same octo-camo system as my suit? Yeah. I thought that technology was of your own design. Um, actually, I kind of based it on some design Sonny snagged off the net. And the data came from? DARPA. Huh. <laughs> so in other words, we're on equal ground technologically. Sorry, I guess I should have told you. And by the looks of things, they know I'm coming, too. Yeah, it could be a trap. Stay sharp. Head for the research lab where Naomi's being held. It's to the north. Snake, there's someone I'd like you to meet. A member of the mission staff. A psychological counselor. Psychological counselor? A lot of soldiers can't handle the stress of battle, end up panicking. She'll be useful in helping you understand the mindset of both the PMC and rebel soldiers. She? Rosemary! Nice to meet you, Snake. This is Rosemary. She used to work as a data analyst at the Pentagon, but moved to combat support during the Big Shell incident. Uh, yeah. She was in charge of Jack's files, wasn't she? After that, she studied psychology. And now she's a counselor with CSP, the Combat Stress Platoon. Yeah, I hear psychological counseling's the hot field these days. Increased combat efficiency and productivity all without ever picking up a gun. I'll be acting as your personal counselor on this mission. Since the passing of the new millennium, one of the most important issues facing today's military is the mental care of its soldiers. I can also provide advice on soldier psychology from a threat assessment perspective. Contact me anytime. I'll be standing by here at home with Roy, but I'm on a different circuit. The frequency is 147.79. Her advice will have a positive effect on your psych gauge. Survival on the battlefield depends on your psychological well-being. 
lose your cool and your body stops doing what you tell it to. Even a veteran soldier like you. I know. Mind, body, technique. Some things haven't changed with time. When your psych is running low, ask her for advice. It'll help keep you in peak condition and focused on the mission. By the way, Colonel, isn't that your house? Well, yes. Then the woman you married, the one that Merrill was talking about. Is Rosemary, yes. Didn't I tell you before? News to me. What about Jack? Jack. Jack, from Foxhound. Codename Ryden. I seem to remember him being engaged to Rose. Oh. We lost all trace of him. Jack's gone. I used to work with the guy. He saved Sonny from the Patriots. He disappeared soon after that. What about you? Jack disappeared and you just moved in on Rose? I was consoling her over her loss, and one thing just led to another. She's young enough to be your daughter. Yeah, lucky me, huh? huh. Now I see why Merrill was so disgusted. Merrill said something about me. Yeah, I believe her words were, I'll never forgive that womanizing piece of shit. I see. Colonel, you knew she was our informant in the Middle East, didn't you? Was it you who put her up to it? Yes. I used my connections in the army to get Merrill the job. You wanted your daughter someplace where you could keep an eye on her. Look, everybody involved in the incident at Shadow Moses either lost their job and status, or in the case of Merrill and Mei Ling, got brushed aside. Merrill wanted to make a comeback, a difference. We can't all be as strong as you, Snake. Some of us can't bear living like pariahs. Huh. Since Shadow Moses, I've been branded a criminal. I think of it as my own small way of making it up to my daughter. My own flesh and blood. In any case, call Rosemary if you ever need advice. an ambush ahead. Government and PMC troops. You could be shot from anywhere. Watch your surroundings. Look to the distance. Is this... Jack? Jack is dead. Snake. I'm at your side. Wait. and stay behind cover. Get in nowhere! Get in nowhere! Move! Ah! 
Yo, you over here. Come on, hop in. It's getting rough out there. I don't think so. You know those nano machines I injected you with back in the Middle East? They let me track your location. <laughs> Figures, the B and B's are here. Things are about to get hairy. B and B's. You never heard of them? They're Beauty and the Beast. Together they're called the B and B Corps. They're a squad of enhanced female soldiers, belong to the PMCs. Anytime there's a mess that needs cleaning up, they're on the scene leading the elites. That's a female? Probably freelancers hired by the PMCs. They're run out of a separate parent organization. Guess it's time for good old Drebin to let you in on a few things. Ever since you showed up in the Middle East, the B&B Corps has got orders to kill. Their number one priority is to eliminate some guy on sight. A guy named, uh, Solid Snake. But from where I'm sitting, Old Snake seems a little more appropriate. Uh, old, huh? Cheer up. That's the bad news. Word on the street says that beneath those ugly ass suits, the B and B's are real babes. Drop dead gorgeous. They also say each one of them's been traumatized by war. Bad. They weren't even soldiers to begin with, you know. More like victims of war. They suffered shell shock on the battlefield. Post traumatic damage their minds pretty much beyond repair. So the only way they could cope with the reality of battle was to become war machines themselves. The remnants of their human side are buried deep within. The beast, that's what you see on the outside. War transforms a snake into beasts. Within that shell, something human survives. A fragile, scarred heart. Without a shell to protect it, it's like the yolk of an egg. Word going round is, their natural flesh and blood bodies can't survive in the open for more than a few minutes. And they've been convinced that by killing Snake, their minds will be cleansed. They think it's gonna free them from all the pain, and all the fury, and all the sorrow. Which makes these babes pretty much obsessed with killing you. Four B&Bs have been identified so far. The one you just saw was Raging Raven. There's also Laughing Octopus, a master of mimicry, and Crying Wolf. She runs on four legs. And finally, the mistress of mind control, Screaming Mantis. Mantis? Yeah. There used to be a guy by that name in the U.S. military. A Russian psychic. He could control people's minds. I guess she inherited the title. 
She keeps the other B&B's minds in check with her powers. Octopus. Raven. Wolf. Mantis. You got it. They're the snake hound, you know. And they've got you in their sights. <laughs> Shit. I'd hate to be in your shoes. Drebin. I thought no one was supposed to be able to hack into the system. Are you with the Patriots? No, sir. I ain't no lale lule. <laughs> I mean, I'm no Patriot. Oh, you can say Patriot. I guess that means you're clean, right? The nano machines I got in me are different from the military kind. No speech restrictions for me. What the hell are these Patriots? Are they human? Not anymore, they ain't. They're the law of this world, created over the course of history. They're what holds this world together, keeps this whole mess in check. The Patriots are America, the world's greatest military power. They are the war economy which makes you and me just cogs in a much grander schematic. I mean, someone obviously had to start the whole thing at the beginning, but now their law has taken on a life of its own. A life of its own? Yep. The country, the war economy, it ain't run by people. It's run by the system. No need for high-level decision-making authority. It's all handled by a massive, yet simple, information processing system. An AI. Hmm. It works just like natural law. The world's a much simpler place than most folks realize. Every aspect of the Patriot system is closely monitored by three peripheral AIs and a core AI that ties them all together. The SOP system is one part of that. It's all backed up by a foolproof control system, so not even yours truly can sneak inside the Patriots' AIs. What if, hypothetically, someone found a way? If they could fool the IDS. I guess they could use it as a haven to lay low. Haven? You know, like a tax haven. In the internet society, we have net havens, data havens. A haven is some place where social conventions and the rules of the net don't apply. Back in the 20th century, the super-rich would open bank accounts in countries without income tax laws. Not a bad way to evade paying taxes. Now we've got us a society where everybody's DNA and personal info is totally controlled by the nanomachines inside their bodies. Won't be long before people start using havens to escape from ID control. I guess you could say my gun laundering kind of borrows from the Haven concept, after a fashion. Even so, good luck finding a way to access the Patriots' AIs from the outside. It's absolutely impossible. No chance in hell. Like I said, there's no breaking into those AIs from the outside. But Liquid's got something in mind. You sure there's no way? <laughs> I'm just a gun launderer. Only reason I'm interested in you is because you start a lot of fires. All right then. You need me? Just give me a ring. Get your ass back inside. Now! I have you.
Snake, can you hear me? This is Jack, isn't it? I am Raiden. Jack is no more. Where are you now? I'm right beside you. Raiden, where have you been all this time? What have you been doing? On a mission. Finding something. For someone. Finding what? The corpse. Of Big Boss. What? I was asked to do this in exchange for Sonny's location. Liquid? No. The leader of a small resistance group. Her followers call her Matkapluku. Matkapluku? Big Mama. Hmm. We'll finish this later. I'll follow your trail and catch up with you. Wait, what about Big Boss's body? It's with her now. Her. What's going on, Snake? Rose, I just got a call from Raiden. It sounds like he's close by. Jack? Yeah. Did... did he seem okay? Yeah, as far as I could tell from his voice. Really? Uh, that's great. Snake, I have a favor to ask. What? Don't let him know I'm involved in this operation, okay? I think it would be best to just leave him alone for now. What happened between you and Jack? After the Big Shell incident, he became unstable. Memories began to resurface from his childhood when he fought for Solidus in the Liberian Civil War. And in the midst of all of that, the baby we had together, it, it hadn't even been born yet. Jack slowly stopped coming home. And when he did, he'd be dead drunk, sometimes covered in cuts and bruises. Roy was worried. He was Jack's commanding officer, but Jack just avoided him. I was all alone. And Roy was so kind to me. He's the one who encouraged me to become a counselor. I know it sounds like I'm making excuses, but I needed to get over it, to move on with my life. I'm worried about him, of course, but I'm also afraid of him. All right. I'll keep my mouth shut. Thank you, Snake. and find out where she is.
Then we'll have to make a lot of changes. Yes, that's right. We'll need another go at it. That won't work. Uh huh. Yes. I've taken care of it. Yes. Yes, I understand that, but. Next test. Naomi. And things on your end? I see. We're on schedule here as well. I know. Me too. <laughs> Until then. <laughs> I knew you'd come. You and I, neither of us can escape our fate. I haven't seen you since Shadow Moses. How long? Ten years? Nine. And Dr. Emmerich, is he with you? Why? I thought he'd be the only one able to open the mail I sent. Not many people could recognize a 4D sound data in a Soliton radar file. How is the good doctor? Otacon's fine. He's the same as ever. Otacon? I see. Who were you just talking to? Liquid. Although I suppose he's really Ocelot. From a medical standpoint. I thought he was here. He's not, at the moment. Where are all the guards? They know I won't escape. I'm powerless to resist. I have no choice but to cooperate. What you saw was the soldiers' emotions run amok. Another product of the system. You don't trust me? I'm not sure yet. And if I answer your question? Let's hear it first. Liquid. We thought the SOP was an ID control system designed primarily to maintain order and control in battle. <laughs> and we were right. But only partially. SOP had another function. To control people's senses. The nanomachines inside soldiers' bodies adapt to different conditions, promoting the release of neurotransmitters, hormones, and stimulants, giving them an edge in battle. They can create an artificial combat high by releasing endorphins at the same time a soldier kills an enemy. Or they can suppress hormones to neutralize the soldier's emotions, 
prevent them from panicking and engaging in friendly fire or needless massacres. It's all controlled by the system's core AI. It artificially controls the soldier's pain, emotion, senses, in other words, the essence of his being. The skyrocketing demands of the war economy have fueled the demand for more soldiers and more fighting. This in turn led to the development of technologies to rapidly improve their combat abilities and control their actions. The system ensures a steady supply of battle-optimized soldiers at a minimum of cost. But you, of all people, must understand, Snake, that unlike combat technique, a soldier's senses can't be taught. They must be earned through experience. Does this have something to do with that test of yours? The goal was to release the soldiers' nanomachines from the system. But we didn't know about the mental control. And the nanomachines went berserk? No. Our test was a success. At least, it confirmed our hypothesis at the time. Just as we predicted, the nanomachines stopped functioning, and the PMC soldiers were freed from the grips of the system. But the moment the system stopped, all the pain and fury and sorrow, all the trauma and stress, all the hatred, regret, guilt, all the sensations that had been suppressed were unleashed within their hearts. Their memories, unlike their senses, weren't erased. Each enemy soldier they'd killed, each lost comrade, each threat of violence against the innocent, every act of war they'd committed was etched firmly in their hearts. In suppressing the user's mind, the nanomachines exact a heavy burden on his heart. The user's body rejects the nanomachines. This reaction must then be suppressed with drugs. Before the user knows it, his mind is in complete shambles. Snake, remember Frank? Frank Yeager, Gray Fox. They twisted his body for their experiments and nullified his broken heart with nanomachines. SOP has taken it even further and applied it to living human beings. The sins of war these soldiers carried inside them returned to assault them in the form of unimaginable shell shock. The meaning in the system may have changed, but the battlefield hasn't. Until that point, war was like a game to them. And then suddenly, reality came crashing down. Ordinarily, our hearts are hardened through experience. Even the most grizzled veterans live with an inescapable guilt they've had to overcome bit by bit through the years. And even then, it never truly goes away. For a mind lacking that essential experience, it was simply too much to bear. But what about me? I've never been under the system's control. That's why I want to examine your body. You need to know, too. All right, Snake. Undress. Snake, what's gotten into you? Hurry up. over with. Yes. Of course. I'm sorry. <laughs> the 
Snake, do you remember what I told you in my video mail? About the first generation of nanomachines? Hmm. The ones you stuck me with at Moses. Yes. The nanomachines are recharged by your body heat. They won't stop functioning until they're all Just extracted. Relax. Or until you do. Most of them were lost through bleeding and excretion, but around 30% still remain inside your body, That's attached enough. to your cells. Not finished yet. The first generation were never ID registered, so they don't react in the same way as the SOP nanomachines. Ready? But they may be interfering with your body and with your heart. Hmm. So, does the aging have something to do with Fox Dye, too? No. Your telomeres were intentionally set up to be short, regardless of the age of the original. One of the genes that inhibit reproduction and aging, the Clotho gene, was intentionally mutated as well. But more importantly, your chromosomes, like liquids, were provided with terminator genes to prevent them from making copies. Why? Your clones created for one purpose, war. And so, in order to prevent you from being abused by clients or stolen by the enemy, they shortened your lifespan and removed your ability to reproduce. It was a safety device to ensure that the seed of Big Boss didn't end up in the hands of others. The reason you're aging so rapidly isn't because of disease or faulty research or fox dye. It's how you were born. It's your natural lifespan. The truth, Naomi. How long is my body gonna hold out? Your cells, blood, organs, nerves, skeletal system, muscle tissue, every part of your body is aging rapidly. An ordinary man wouldn't even be standing by now. Snake, the only thing keeping you together is the strength of your will. How long do I have? Half a year. <sighs> Don't. <sighs> Snake. There's something I have to tell you. Uh, now what? You and I both know your body is approaching its limit. But when I said half a year, I wasn't talking about your lifespan. What do you mean? We can't get rid of the fox dye in your body completely. At this point, it's circulating within you like a normal virus. Yeah, so? Listen to me. Fox dye only kills its victims when the infected person's genetic code fully matches the genetic sequence programmed into the virus's receptors. In other words, it only attacks targets with specific genes. I know. That's what killed the AT president. And Liquid. Yes. And at the same time, it's set up to protect those not designated as targets from the virus's harmful effects. Here. I'll show you. The receptors on the fox dye inside your body are breaking down. The rapid aging process is changing the environment within your body. As a result, the virus is starting to mutate. The viruses on the left are fox dye in its original form. The ones on the right I took from your body. They're already mutated. The receptors, they're wearing down. Meaning? This mutated version of fox dye could activate even if the infected person's genetic pattern doesn't perfectly match the receptors. Which means the virus is becoming indiscriminate about what type of target it kills.
Ever since Shadow Moses, fox dye has been breeding continuously in the nanomachine colony inside your body and dispersing into the air. But there are no more targets to attack, so there haven't been any more outbreaks. However, if the receptors continue to wear down, it'll become a killer virus that attacks untold numbers of victims. What if we kill them all? Remove them from the body? There are no antibodies either. I don't know what percentage of the receptors have to break down, or how many people will be targeted when that happens. But what is certain is that people will begin to catch fox dye through airborne transmission. It'll start with those closest to you. Then, one by one, they'll lose their lives. The part of the virus that distinguishes between individuals will start to break down in about... Half a year. No. Three months at the most. Three months? Ironic, isn't it? You've spent your entire life saving the world from Metal Gear, from nuclear annihilation. And now, you're becoming a doomsday device yourself. I can't predict exactly how devastating the epidemic will be. Whether just 1% of the human race could unlock the broken receptors, or whether we all can. In either case, three months from now you'll be a walking biological weapon. If it were up to me, you'd be quarantined already. <sighs> it's not over yet. I know. You still have a job to do. You have three months. Still enough time to think once all of this is done with. And if I choose death first, will that stop Fox Die from spreading? When the host dies, the virus dies with it. Snake, tell me one more thing. Have you been to a hospital lately? Yeah. While you were there, did they give you an injection? Don't they always? Take a look at this. These came out of your body as well. It's a new strain of fox dye, one I've never seen. Someone must have put them in you recently. Do you have any idea who? Him. The new fox dye strain is starting to multiply rapidly. What's in it? I can't say for sure. I'll need to do some more tests. Here. Take this. It contains the same substance the soldiers' nanomachines secrete inside their bodies. It's a drug that inhibits the nanomachine's ability to regulate the senses. The nanomachines inside the body malfunction when the system interferes with them. It triggers a reaction in the body, which is why you're having the seizures. Give yourself a shot whenever they get bad. It's potent, so use it sparingly, unless you want to end up an invalid. It may restore your psych for a short while, but use it too often and the amount restored will start to decrease. I've been a fool. I let myself drown in my nanomachines and now I'm trapped by them. 
you said yourself, we mustn't allow ourselves to be chained to fate. I can't slip free. Then I'll free us both. Where's Liquid? I can't tell you yet. Not until you free me. Do you even know? Liquid left here last night. Where was he headed? Those are my terms. I can't leave this place of my own will. What are you talking about? I'm being... watched. <sighs> Liquid has altered his plan. Removing the system will only cause his army to collapse from within. So he's chosen to seize control instead. Liquid's objective is to hijack the SOP system. He'll use it to create the ultimate army of perfect soldiers and launch his insurrection against the Patriots. There's a name for his new plan. He calls it Guns of the Patriots. Guns of the Patriots? This place isn't safe. Come with us. This way. Snake, you'll have to break through to go after Naomi. Take out those enemy soldiers and clear a path.
Help me. It hurts. It's another mimic. Watch out, Snake.
Yo, Snake, looking good today. Driven, what do you want? That's cold, man. And here I was about to tell my very best customer about face camo. Face camo? That camo skull cap you just picked up from Tentacle's shell. It utilizes the same kind of technology as your Octo camo suit. Using the two together can get you even better results. I'd hang on to it if I was you. Doesn't fit. It's not my size or shape. Yeah, looks like it could use a bit of tailoring before you can sport it. Not my line of work, but... Ain't you got a buddy who specializes in that kind of thing? Hmm. Somebody's done their homework. Hey, is my job. Is that the real reason you injected me with those nanomachines? To spy on me? I prefer the term customer data management myself. Driven. Relax. It's strictly confidential. I ain't gonna share it with anybody. Then what did you mix a virus in with the nanomachines for? Virus? A certain virus was detected in my body. Are you saying it wasn't in the nanomachines you injected? Look. You do know there are other folks who could have done this to you. And besides, what would I gain from infecting you? Better for me that you're out there kicking ass on the battlefield. I was watching you, Snake. You're a real piece of work. Never thought I'd meet the man who could take down Laughing Octopus single-handedly. <sighs> she just kept on laughing. Now why do you suppose that is? <sighs> Something in her past. You got it. She's from a village in Scandinavia. Little seaside hamlet known to all the locals as the Devil's Village. Place wasn't known for devils, though. It was known for octopus. See, this was one of the few places in Europe where they ate octopus customarily. Anyway, there's this cult of crazies who for some reason hate the village with a passion. Then, when she was just a teenager, things get bad. These nutcases get their hands on some weapons and attack the village. Overnight, her sleepy little fishing town becomes a war zone. They round up all the villagers and execute them one by one. Except for that girl. They had something else planned for her. Something a whole lot worse than dying. Calling her the devil's child, they forced her to do the kind of thing you'd expect from one of Lucifer's own. After they made her torture her family and friends, they made her kill them. The whole time they were forcing her to laugh, howl like some sort of demon, like she was enjoying it. What was she gonna do? Say no? They'd kill her too. So she let fear take control and did exactly as they told her. She butchered the bodies of the ones she loved and laughed while she did it. And as she bathed in their blood, it gradually turned from deep red to jet black. To her, it looked like the ink of an octopus. The experience scarred her deep. Ever since then, she hasn't stopped laughing. Only, that ain't really laughter. Why are you telling me this? You expect me to feel sorry for her? Nah. I know you got no room for that stuff in your world. And besides, this is war. Right? In a way, though, I guess it was the right thing to do. What was? Fighting you cleansed her mind. All right, enough chit-chat. There's other beasts out there in them woods. Watch your back.
Snake, have you lost sight of the target? Whenever something moves, it leaves a trail behind. Track and find Naomi's trail. I'm not like Big Boss. Tracking isn't my strongest suit. When did you get so good at it? After saving Sonny, I drifted around the globe. In Alaska, a tribal elder taught me some scouting techniques. Drifted? You never went back to see Rose? Rose? She doesn't exist. No. Rose and I live in different worlds, different times. Her world has no place for someone like me. My place is here on the battlefield. Huh. Listen, Snake. Scouting is based on the principles of hunting. There are two fundamentals. Awareness and tracking. Awareness? Awareness refers to locating a trail by paying careful attention to your surroundings. Tracking means to follow that trail. Your target's trail could be footprints, a branch they broke along the way, bent grass trampled underfoot. You need to feel for clues using all your senses. Sound, smell, touch, the direction of the wind. Watch how the animals move. Listen for unusual bird calls. These are signs that someone may be disrupting the environment nearby. You sound like a ninja. Exactly. Ninja are the ultimate scouts. If your enemy is a skilled scout, they'll be doing the same thing. You may be the hunter, but you are also the hunted. To avoid enemy detection, move slowly, little by little. Don't disturb the air around you. Try to make as little noise as possible. Your pursuers will be doing the same, trying to sneak up on you without a sound. If you can't pick up the trail with your naked eye, switch the solid eye to infrared mode. That will enable you to see Naomi's footprints and any enemies lying in ambush. Switch the solid eye to infrared. Got it. But the sound it makes while engaged could end up giving your position away. So don't leave it on for too long. All right. Listen to your heart. Trust your senses as much as you can. And you will find Naomi's trail. I'll give it a shot. Snake, follow Naomi's trail and find out where they took her. Watch out, though. You might run into a few holdups along the way.
the go-ahead. Begin. We'll use his blood. It could get intense. Brace yourselves. Shots, all of you. Yes, sir. I'll be taking a nap. <sighs>
shoot the gate! Get out of here! Can you move? Yes.
Again, our paths cross. Ugh! <laughs> 
Could you be the one to finally finish me? She got away. Are you sure about this? It's all part of the plan. The test was a failure, even with his code. As I feared, it's not pure enough. We need all of him. The PMCs we deployed have suffered brain damage. Nothing salvageable remains. Our only remaining option is to secure the original. I know that. It's only a matter of time. We're working as fast as we can to find their hiding place. I need you here too, Vamp. Hang in there! Vamp! He's got to be immortal! No! He's not immortal at all. It was my design that caused his body to be like that. Huh? What do you mean? The nanomachines in his body cause his wounds to close and heal at an accelerated rate. Someone took the basic nanomachine technology I once researched and perfected it. In a sense, I'm responsible for Vamp. It's one of my sins. Does your body have the same nanomachines? I brought a monster into this world. And... I too. Right. Hold him down! He's losing too much blood. Can you save him? I don't know. He needs a blood transfusion. No, an infusion of artificial blood. The trick is to keep the lid on. Now, let it cook for one minute. You like cooking, don't you? Good for you. This is my sunny side up fortune telling. Um, when it turns out good, it means something good is gonna happen. Uh -huh. So that's why you don't cook them over easy. But the secret to good cooking 
is to keep who's going to eat it in mind. Oh. Oh. Is this your mother? She's really beautiful. That tune you were humming. It's from the periodic table, isn't it? <clears throat> Thorium, protactinium, uranium, neptunium, plutonium, americium. Americium. Ah. Uh, curium. Curium. <laughs> curium. Curium. That's it. Curium. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this? <laughs> May I? Sunny, us girls have to look our best. <laughs> Her name was Olga. Hmm? My mother. Oh. I see. Oh, it's going to burn. Hold on, hold on. And... There. Done. <laughs> Thanks. Of course. We did a great job. <laughs> 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 Dr. Emmerich, Liquid is in Eastern Europe. He's after the corpse of Big Boss. Huh? What for? It's the final key he needs to gain access to SOP. The keys to the system are Big Boss's genetic code and biometric data. Without them, there's no way to gain access. Wait, what's Liquid been doing all this time? He's been performing tests. Two tests. The first, using the genetic code from Liquid's DNA chip. In his second attempt, he used the DNA code and biometric data extracted from Snake's blood. What's the need for the original if a substitute works just as well? Neither your genetic pattern nor Liquid's genetic pattern is a 100% match for big bosses. <laughs> What do you mean we don't match? <laughs> Dr. Emmerich. Hmm? Scientifically speaking, there's the markers implanted during the cloning process. The mixing of mitochondrial DNA within the egg cell. The intentionally altered terminate, terminator genes, scientifically speaking. Both you and Liquid are as similar to Big Boss as you could possibly be, but you're still different. Different? Yes. That's what 
liquid was talking about. Which is why they created Solidus. But Solidus is dead. Listen carefully, Snake. This is the most important part. The AI that controls the system employs a highly aggressive, advanced IDS. It uses a special code to inspect all data and commands circulating within the network. Any data that fails to conform to that code is treated as a foreign object and expunged, like viruses killed by white blood cells. The authentication program this IDS uses is based on a genetic identification program, one I helped develop for Foxdie. It's set up so that host commands only execute properly if the key matches perfectly. However, if the IDS suspects someone is trying to break into the system, it registers that genetic code on a blacklist. That code is then blocked and can never again be used to access the system. So, if you're going to use a substitute, you need to find a new genetic access code with each new trial. So when Liquid accessed the system in the Middle East and South America, it was only a test. I can't believe this. Snake and Big Boss don't have the same genetic code? Strictly speaking, Snake and Liquid aren't the same either. Which is why Fox Die only affected Liquid at Shadow Moses. And spared you. Let's put it this way. If Liquid uses Big Boss's genetic code, the original, they'll have the system completely under his control. Hold on. I thought having his code wasn't enough. You need his biometric data at the same time, don't you? That's right. And Big Boss is already dead. No. He's alive. Big Boss is... alive. His body is. Or rather, his cells. That's impossible! Big Boss survives as a biomort. A brain-dead shell sustained in the lab. Liquid has already left for Europe in search of Big Boss's body. Right from the start, he knew his experiment in South America wasn't going to work. Europe, huh? The test was a failure, even with his code. As I feared, it's not pure enough. We need all of him. Our only remaining option is to secure the original. If Liquid obtains the body, he'll be primed to make his final move. Hmm. Allowing him total control of the system. Exactly. Unless we can stop him first. Heating up the R&D race. No. It's not just the PMCs, either. 
Every corporation tethered to the military-industrial complex is losing its sense of morality. And it's us science holics who are doing their dirty work for them, not even realizing it. Can we make Jack better? I don't know. Sunny. May I? It's no use. There's nothing we can do here. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Look at this. His artificial blood needs dialysis. We don't have the proper equipment. Dialysis? Getting his wounds healed is important, too. But at this rate, he's not gonna last that long. Dialysis? Is that like what kidneys do? That's right. Raiden's blood is an older type of artificial blood that was used by the military, called white blood. After it's been in use for a while, the blood needs to be dialyzed. Filtered. Right now, he's slipping into autotoxemia. What do you mean? Eastern Europe. They have equipment that can heal me there. Where? The same place Liquid went? <laughs> Dr. Magnar. He saved my life. Dr. Madnar. I've heard of him. A world-renowned cybernetics expert. Strictly underground, though. We're in luck, then. It's settled. We must head for Europe. The sooner we get there, the oh, better. Uh, yeah. I'll call Campbell and have him get us landing clearance. Oh, a snake! Where are you going? Well, I'm gonna be spewing out poison soon enough anyway. What's one more smoker? Uh-uh. Oh. This is a no-smoking flight.
<laughs> Who is this? Oh, her? That's my sister. Really? I never knew you had a sister. For a moment, I thought she might have been your girlfriend. No, I... I don't have a... Emma was a brilliant programmer. She wrote the worm that destroyed the Arsenal Gear AI. Then... Vamp killed her. I'm so sorry. No! There's nothing for you to be sorry for. Or me. <laughs> I used to be an anime otaku. Oh. So, that's where Otacon comes from. I was always fascinated by sci-fi anime. That's what got me into this line of work. It's too bad reality wasn't so simple. I never even imagined that science, that my own research, could cause so much misery. I mean... It's not like a science holics or Satanists or anything. But even when we've got the best of intentions, we end up being used by others for evil. Uh, oh, Dr. Emmerich, I... Uh, you see this? Sonny helped me build it. <laughs> really? Sonny helped build this? We built it using top-secret docs and patents dug up from intranets at a bunch of research labs. To tell you the truth, I think she's better at it than I am. But she's just a child. She cracked the protection on your mail. Well, I um, assumed it was you. <laughs> Sunny was taken by the Patriots right after she was born. She never even met her parents. She spent her entire childhood inside the net. That's why she has trouble speaking. Her home is in the computer. She can only see the outside from the inside. She's always in there, searching for herself, searching for her family. She's trying to find out who she is and where she's going. Searching for herself and her family. She believes she can find the answers inside a machine hooked up to the world. She spends every day inside the net exploring. For Sunny, this is home. No, it shouldn't be like that. What? It's time you let her go outside. What are you talking about? She hasn't even been born yet. She's still in the womb. She needs to live a real life. But... Sonny's never shown any interest in leaving the Nomad. Frankly, I'm worried about letting her go out there. I have a feeling she'll do just fine. You really think she'll be okay going outside? That's not what I meant. I think she's got a good handle on her science. Ah. Uh, uh, sorry. Go on. Huh? You were about to say something. Oh. Uh, right. Um, would you mind if I helped Sunny with her cooking? Oh, of course not. Go ahead. <laughs> but, uh, about all we've got on board besides military rations are eggs. No. Leave them off. It makes you look handsome. <laughs> you think so? Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, 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 Doctor Emmerich. Huh? Is it okay to sleep in there? Uh, excuse me. Well, Doctor Emmerich. Um, I. <laughs> I know it's easy to forget sometimes, but oh, I, I am a woman. <laughs> you understand. <laughs> Sorry. I, I know it's selfish of me, but I'd like to be alone for a while. Right. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> uh, I'll show you in. Thank you. Good night, Dr. Emmerich. Yeah. Uh, if you get uncomfortable or anything, just let me know. Uh, I'll be out there working. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Uh, and, uh... Yes? Uh, call me Hal. Good night. Good night, Hal. national state of emergency has been declared in an effort to root out the local resistance. The hunt is being carried out by U.S.-based PMC, Raven Sword, one of the companies under Outer Heaven's control. Which means that liquid's lurking somewhere behind the scenes. Right. And at the top of the target list is the Paradise Lost Army, the resistance group led by Big Mama. Snake. You'll be infiltrating the region where they are believed to house their base of operations. It looks as if the PMCs moved swiftly, cutting off Big Mama and Company's escape routes. They should still be hiding somewhere in that area. Big Boss's corpse is bound to be with them. You've been added to the PMC's blacklist, so you're going to have to lie about your identity to get in. I've provided you with a way to evade the checkpoints. There you are. Make contact with the Resistance and find Big Mama. This is our last chance. We must reach Big Boss's body before they do.
Next. 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 Set next. You. Get your ass in the machine. Hey, are you deaf? Take him away. I'll take him from here. But... We've been looking for this man. Y yes, ma'am. Come with me. Next. You're looking younger. What's your secret? Face camo. A little present from tentacles. Huh. The PMCs sure seem to know you well enough. You may not believe it, but I'm in charge of overseeing all PMC activity. Having connections can still open doors. You alone? Listen to me, Snake. After reporting what happened in the Middle East to my superiors, I wrote up a threat assessment. The President's finally realized the danger Liquid's little rebellion poses and has called for immediate action. Now I've got more bodies than I know what to do with. A whole joint Army Marines team. They're already on site, mixed in with the U.S. forces here. We're ready to strike Liquid at any time. You're planning to take him by force. It's crazy. Look, things aren't that simple. <sighs> Listen, old man. I don't take orders from you or from your Colonel Campbell. Uh, it's gonna be the Middle East all over again. No, it won't. If things get out of hand, we can put a total lockdown on the PMC's weapons. They won't be able to fight back. Don't forget, we control the system. I wouldn't rely too much on the system if I were you. We've got them beat in sheer numbers. Meryl! Look, Snake. Just leave this to me. There's no need for you to put yourself in harm's way. Don't risk your life for no reason. <sighs> Snake. What you're trying to do, it's not a mission. I know. It's not justice. It's a hired hit. If you know, then... <coughs> Look, our ways of thinking might be different. But to me, you're still a legend. A hero. 
I know all about the things you did when you were young. It was what kept me going. I can't bear to watch you die over something so pointless. <laughs> Don't worry about me. Old soldiers never die. <clears throat> Your cause is our cause now. You don't have to do this. I'm no hero. Never was. I'm just an old killer. Hired to do some wet work. Denial to face the truth. Wake up and face reality, old snake. And stay out of our way. They've seen this face, too. Yeah. It might have been added to the PMC's blacklist as well. And Merrill was acting kind of strange. Things are going to get hairy once the American suppression troops get here. We'd better get to Big Boss's corpse, and fast. But first, we've got to find Big Mama. Snake, let's go over what we know so far. The streets are under curfew. The only people you'll find out there now are PMC soldiers and members of the Resistance. Yeah. I thought it looked a little too quiet to be a tourist attraction. The Resistance members are scheduled to convene at Big Mama's hideout. So our best course of action is to follow their lead. When you find the Resistance, tail them. Let them lead you to Big Mama. But how exactly am I supposed to find this Resistance? The PMCs have laid a dragnet for Resistance members that covers the entire town. They're using SOP to notify each other by radio of any info collected during their searches. By intercepting those signals, you should be able to reach the Resistance members' locations in real time. Intercept their communications? How do I do that? I've provided you with a new device for just that purpose. To hijack PMC communications, open the item window and select the Signal Interceptor. The Interceptor constantly monitors PMC voice and data transmissions. When you've got the Signal Interceptor equipped and you hear the PMC's chatter about the Resistance, check your map. It should display the location. Got it. Oh, and Snake, I think we've found a way to treat Raiden. Really? Yeah, we got in touch with Dr. Madnar. Naomi and Sonny are on their way now. They'll be all right on their own. They're a few clicks north of where you are now. It's a non-combat zone, so there won't be any checkpoints. There's even a dialysis machine. It'll take some time, but I think he'll be okay. Good. Anyway, you need to hurry and make contact with Big Mama. I got it. If Liquid gets his hands on that corpse, it's all over. Follow the Resistance's lead. Okay. First thing is to look for the Resistance. Either use your radar to pick up their trail, or intercept the PMC's radio communications to learn where Resistance members are most likely to be found.
found a resistance member. It's time to start tailing them. Get on it, Snake. Snake, the location of a resistance member has been forwarded to your map. Check it out. CQC, Snake. No doubt about it, he is the legendary soldier. Call me Mama. Big Mama. How you've grown, David. It was you, not I, who was created from the rib of man. But I gave you life. I am your mother. What? Les enfants terribles. You can't grow a human being in a test tube, not even a clone. You need a woman's body to give it life. You mean... a surrogate mother? That's an awfully cold way to put it. I am your mother. I gave birth... for the Patriots. Gave... birth? The forbidden fruit. Appropriate. No?
follow me. I'll explain everything. The man who wants me dead is Liquid, your twin. You think you know him, but I know him better. He was once Ocelot, but Liquid has taken control of his soul. And now he's locked in a bitter struggle with Zero. Zero? The founder of the Patriots. Founder? When did this happen? Forty years ago. During the Cold War, when the United States and the Soviet Union were still at odds. It was in that chaotic era that the Patriots were born. And I played my part. I was one of the founding members. You? Zero created the Patriots to manage and control the American state. That control endured long after the Cold War ended. The organization became an empty shell, continuing to function through AIs. Those AIs are responsible for the creation of the war economy, and they gave rise to the Sons of the Patriot system. But I am partly to blame. I bear some of the guilt for creating the organization. It was right after I first met your father. Big Boss. Back in 1964, I was ordered to take part in a CIA op called Operation Snake Eater, which concerned a new weapon the Soviets were developing at the time. My mission was to support a certain agent. That agent later became Big Boss. But I knew him as Snake. Snake? Yes. Naked Snake. That was his code name at the time. A name he would give to you, his son. The commander of this mission was a man called Zero, the head of Special Forces Unit Fox. Back then, I was working as a double agent for the Chinese. My objective was to secure the location of the Philosopher's Legacy, a massive cache of hidden wealth and report it to Beijing. I was to acquire a microfilm showing the location of secret funds, funds amassed by the Allied powers during World War II. But I failed in my mission and was expelled from China. I took the apple from the snake and was cast out of Eden. After years on the run, I ended up in Hanoi. That's where I met him again. It was around then that Zero used the massive funds contained in the Philosopher's Legacy to start a new organization, the Patriots, which would carry out the final wishes of a certain legendary hero. The initial membership consisted of Big Boss, Sigint, Paramedic, and their commander, Zero. Oh, and there was one more who we mustn't forget. He stayed behind in the Soviet Union to support the group as an informant, Osava who is now liquid. After your father rescued me in Hanoi, I went to America and joined their organization. Zero's goal was to achieve a unity of thought and awareness. He believed that was what the boss wanted, and the rest of the Patriots followed his lead. The boss? The boss was a legendary hero from the Second World War, known as the Mother of Special Forces. She had an almost overwhelming charisma about her. The CIA feared this, so they had her eliminated. If she had survived, the world of the 21st century might have been a very different place. We were all influenced by the boss's will. It was what drove us to create this organization, to be closer to that spirit. Zero decided that in order to lead the people, we needed a special kind of icon. So we turned to Big Boss, the last son of the boss. He shared more of her life than anyone else. It was Big Boss, the true heir to her legacy, who was best suited to play this role. Zero elevated Big Boss, the hero who saved the world, to the status of an idol. 
The truth behind Big Boss became riddled with exaggeration, misrepresentation, and outright lies. Zero disseminated these stories among the masses and gathered the rich and powerful to his banner. Every era needs its symbols to control the people. Whether it be the stars and stripes, or the hammer and sickle. As the times and currents of politics changed, so too did Zero. Eventually, he became a prisoner of his own lust for power, sparking friction between him and Big Boss, who resented playing the puppet. With Big Boss drifting away, Zero realized he would need insurance. Something that would perpetuate the existence of Big Boss, their organization's icon. And so Zero secretly embarked on a new project. Les Enfants Terribles. Its goal was to create a clone of Big Boss, the ultimate soldier. The project was led by Dr. Clark, known at the time as Paramedic. After dozens of failures, they finally, miraculously, succeeded in producing a fertilized egg. The egg used in the successful in vitro fertilization came from Dr. Clark's assistant, a healthy Japanese woman. Blood from the east flows within your veins. Give birth to Big Boss. To realize this, I asked to serve as the surrogate mother and was more than happy to carry you in my womb. I loved him. Nine months later, I gave birth to two big bosses, you and Liquid. It didn't matter that you were clones or that they had manipulated your DNA. You were born the same way as any other normal child, from your mother's womb. But Les Enfants Terribles proved to be the final straw for Zero and Big Boss. Determined to oppose Zero and his plans, Big Boss broke away from the Patriots. He left the States, created his own mercenary company, and drifted around the world. I'm sorry. Your father never wanted you. Human life isn't meant to be manipulated like that. I knew that, but I wanted you. After Big Boss left, Zero really lost control. What Zero wanted was an orderly world, one governed by rules. His fortune grew through countless wars, and his words influenced decision-making all the way up to the Oval Office. As the world saw the rise of digital technology, IT, the internet, and genetics, the Patriots' power grew immense. Their roots spread and took hold throughout the globe. In time, they began to dictate the fate of entire nations from the shadows. And before we knew it, the Patriots, the proud police of the world, started bringing an entire planet under their control. Their intentions were fair, but their execution was flawed. Zero developed weapons, amassed armies, used information for extortion, all in order to gain more wealth. He was obsessed with controlling awareness on the inside from the outside. But I cannot imagine that's what the boss would have wanted. They both misinterpreted her will. and their absolute reverence for her drove them apart. So began the war between Zero and Big Boss. Opposing interpretations, each striving to realize the boss's will. Everything you see today stems from their cold war. <laughs> Differences in race, in religion, in ideology. This war they've caused 
is no different from any other human error in history. It all started with a tiny fork in the path. And grew into a great rift. There was nothing left of the boss's noble will in their struggle. All that remained was hatred, a passion to destroy one another. Big Boss returned to the U.S. with a plan in mind, and once again assumed command of Foxhound. In Outer Heaven, and then Zanzibar Land, Big Boss plotted coup d'etat against Zero. But you, Solid Snake, his own clone, foiled his efforts both times. Big Boss and Gray Fox, Frank Yeager, were left near death. Zero recovered their bodies. Frank Yeager's entire body was reconstructed through surgery, and he was reborn as the cyborg ninja. Big Boss, now a vegetable, became a prisoner of Zero even in death. For Zero, more than anyone else, your father was an irreplaceable icon. No, the truth is, for Zero, he was an irreplaceable friend. After Big Boss's betrayal, Zero could no longer believe in something so uncertain as life. He lost his belief in everything, nations, organizations, individuals. Zero was no longer willing to place his organization in the hands of the next generation. Instead, he set up a network of AIs, a decision-making system formed from all the information he had accumulated. He built four AIs, GW, TJ, AL, and TR, as sort of a digital Mount Rushmore, and one core artificial intelligence to unite them, John Doe. GW? The same GW we destroyed five years ago? The same. Ever since GW was cut off, JD and the other three AIs have controlled all information on every aspect of global society. Economics, politics, law, morals, and culture. The war economy is no exception. In the shadow of the system and its complete control over the world, Big Boss isn't allowed to live or die. He's trapped for eternity in a brain-dead prison. To bind himself to his friend, to ensure his rule over the world, Zero transformed Big Boss into an icon, neither living nor dead. Sounds almost like a religion. Naturally, Ocelot and I planned to free him from Zero's prison. We enlisted Naomi Hunter, an authority in the field of nanomachine research, into our organization. And we used Frank Yeager to kill Dr. Clark. Ocelot tortured the DARPA chief Donald Anderson, also known as Sigmund, to death and made it look like an accident. The Shadow Moses incident. With paramedic and Sigint dead, Zero was the only one left. But we too paid a price. I lost Ocelot. Ocelot wasn't fighting for the Pentagon or the Russians, and certainly not for Zero. He was fighting for Big Boss. He idolized him. When Ocelot grafted Liquid's right arm to his own, his body was taken over by Liquid's thoughts and spirit. He may be Ocelot in physical form, but his mind is Liquid's. I was the last one. And then, someone appeared to help me. Raiden. It was when I met him that I finally discovered the location of Big Boss. It was in the data he obtained from GW. Together, he and I retrieved Big Boss. But Big Boss was still asleep, as Zero had left him. Why did Zero keep him alive? People need heroes. 
Zero wanted to create a messiah. A legend that would never die. Liquid is after Big Boss's body. Is it here? I'll take you to meet him. This is his Pix, his holy ark. His body is alive, but his consciousness is locked away by nanomachines. So technically speaking, he's not really brain dead. We can't allow Liquid to inherit the same sins that corrupted Zero. Manipulating people's minds for the sake of his own ego. What happened? She's gone. She's not in the Nomad anymore. When? Less than an hour ago. She disappeared right after she and Sonny got back from Dr. Madnar's place. Why weren't you watching her? I... Uh, I didn't have my glasses on. Naomi said it herself. The experiment can't succeed without her. You think she went back to Liquid? <sighs> what about Bryden? Good news on that front. We managed to get our hands on a dialysis machine and set up an ICU. We just started him on dialysis and treatment for his wounds. Will he live? Yeah, no worries there. Sonny's taken over for Naomi. But his treatment's probably gonna take 48 hours. Until then, Raiden can't move. Hey you! Come here! Is that move? Found us. We're moving out. Snake, the PMCs are converging on your location. Damn it! They're sending in Gecko! They'll be on you in less than five minutes! Are they ready? Yes, ma'am. We'll escape through the canal route using the real van. Get it ready! Hurry! Yes, ma'am! Snake, over here. We've got decoy vans set to draw some of our pursuers away. They work in arms factories, and when they grow up, they want to join a PMC. They seek revenge on other companies, PMCs that killed their parents, and use their earnings to support their younger siblings. There are countless child soldiers like these in the PMCs. Nowadays, anyone with a computer can get combat training. The FPS games that these children love are distributed for free by these companies. Of course, it's all just virtual training. It's so easy for them to get absorbed by these war games. And before they know it, they're in the PMCs holding real guns. These kids end up fighting in proxy wars that have nothing to do with their own lives. 
They think it's cool to fight like this. They think that combat is life. They don't need a reason to fight. After all, for them, it's only a game. Zero is the cause of all this. Defeating Liquid won't change things. Unless we stop the Patriot system, the cycle will go unbroken. Hop on. Hold on to me. With so many wars being waged, oil and biofuel have become as precious as diamonds. It's been a while since I went out for a ride. Are you sure about this? <laughs> I only get off my bike when I fall in love. Or fall dead. Big Mama. Call me Eva.
got bad news. The decoy vans have all bitten the dust. Which means the enemy will be focusing on you now. I just need you to hold them all. Excellent, Nathan. Mother, 
mother's work is never done. <laughs> Mama. Where, where's the van? Over there. Children. She'll be coming to search the van. I'll take care of it. You stay here. Keep watch. I'll contact the children. Here. Take this. Snake. Come back in one piece. I will. Uh, promise me.
Way to bring that bird down, Snake. Drebin. And you got yourself a souvenir, too. A grenade launcher. Nice. That's a real user-friendly weapon. Not much use to me without an ID, though. I laundered this one free of charge. What's the catch? Only that you give it to me when you're done with it. A weapon with that many decades of rage stored up inside it? Now that's a collector's item. How old was she? I'd say about 20. But she had years of soldiers' rage hidden away in that youthful body of hers. Soldiers? Yeah, the soldiers of Ake. A place that hasn't seen peace in a long, long time. She was captured by one side or another, and kept caged up like an animal, along with God knows how many other kids. Anonymous violence. Exactly. 
It's unknown whether her captors were with the government or the rebels. In any case, they got their kicks by abusing these helpless little kids day after day after day. That constant barrage, that battlefield rage slowly built up inside their bodies, their minds. The kids tried to keep each other's spirits up, always clinging to the hope that someone would come to their rescue, barely surviving off of scraps of food. But those soldiers didn't stop. They called the kids parasites and shit-eating ravens. Beat them even harder. Then one morning, the soldiers just up and left, leaving the surviving kids to be eaten alive by the birds. Almost like one of those sky burials. One by one, their bodies were picked apart by raven's beaks, until finally the flock came for her. But by some miracle, their beaks cut her bonds instead. And like that, she was liberated. In that instant, she was filled with an uncontrollable rage, and it smothered her soul. She ripped the ravens pecking at her to pieces, and then went after the soldiers. And when she finally caught up with them, she waited until nightfall like a hunter awaiting its prey. They say that when a raven cries, a man dies. And that's exactly what happened that night. Screeching and cawing, she killed every last living being in the camp. Both the soldiers and the civilians they'd enslaved. In her eyes, there was no longer a difference. The cruelty her friends had suffered. The pain and humiliation she'd endured. Hers was the distillation of the rage that decades of war had imparted on those soldiers. Mm. It was her strength and her greatest weakness. You're something else, Snake. You managed to cleanse Raven of her rage. No, seriously. You're the seed of war. In fact, I'd say you might even be war itself. Draven. Maybe it's still too early to tell. You've still got half the B&B core ahead of you. Keep your eye on the ball, pal. <sighs> I have to apologize. The three vans that came out with us are decoys. The real one is floating down the river, headed downstream. I managed to get in touch with the children. The Pix is safe. We're going to rendezvous on the riverbank downstream. Land and air routes are cut off. Oh, but there's a cruiser waiting for us. The Volta River is our only chance of escape. Oh, let's get out of here. Hurry. Good thinking. Uh, oh, oh, oh. need to feel the wind anymore. There's no need to keep lying to myself. I only get off my bike when I fall in love. Or... Oh, snake. Give me a hand. Yeah. Uh, The underground aqueduct leads to the river. There should be fewer of them down there.
Liquid. Not bad. Where's the pigs? <laughs> that no longer matters. Where is it? Everything. And now, thanks to her, I finally have it. The thing I've sought for so long. Big Boss. Put down the gun, Snake. It's already too late. You almost did it. But it looks like I win after all. For one last smoke. Huh. You think you're a big boss now? <coughs> oh. Guilty as charged. But all that ends today. to seek you see I've got the upper hand uh, even if you do get a hold of the system you'll only have one part of the Patriots AI uh, the military part Before I have everything. Remember, GW? The AI they think they lost? It's mine. A part of my army. Impossible. We destroyed it. Your worm only managed to cut GW into little pieces. Pieces we were able to reconstruct. And then we stowed it away inside JD's network. This man's body has served me well, allowing me to pass every security barrier between me and GW. After all, the Patriot system is nothing more than a machine. Now that GW is a spook inside the network, there's no way JD would recognize it as an external threat. Once I destroy JD with a nuclear strike, the Patriots Network will be mine. And then, I'll build my haven, free from all forms of control. I'll cast aside my old identity and take my own name for the first time. Created by the Patriots. We're not men. We're shadows in the shape of men. <laughs> We're 
They're freaks who never should have existed. <laughs> Insurance that future generations never prosper. The Patriots saw fit to create us, and in doing so became our only raison d'etre. I won't fight my fate any longer. I'll kill Zero. And Big Boss, and become a patriot myself. It all began with Zero and Big Boss. Our purpose in life is to fulfill our destinies. And once all is returned to Zero, the world can be reborn. So long as we both live, the world will not know an age of light. If we're to pass the baton to the next generation, the only choice left to us is death. Boss. Good. The players have all assembled, Snake. The time has come for you to witness. Witness our moment of triumph!
Meryl! 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 Give up on me. Okay, Meryl. 
Hey. Uh, if it's all right, call me Johnny. are no different. Scorched shadows born to the world. When a beast steps into the light, uh, uh, unless the light is put out, the shadow cannot be erased. So long as there is light, there is shadow. To return everything to normal, the light must be extinguished. And when that happens, you will be too... Like I said, we pride ourselves on service. Come on, let's take this guy to his friends. a stealth nuclear warhead at JD. I thought you couldn't control the nuke with GW. We can't. We've taken over their guns and heavy weapons, but the WMDs are still under JD's control. That's where Rex comes in. I know where to find nukes they don't control. Vamp, how long until Rex is ready? All that's left is the final check. We've identified JD's location through GW and abandoned 20th century satellite orbit disguised as debris. A clever place to hide. Hmm. Satellite orbit. With a stealth nuke, there's no need to worry about the Patriots intercepting it. By the time they realize what's happening, it'll all be over. Once JD, the core AI is destroyed, 
GW's priority will rise to one, and all the systems under JD's control will then be ours to command. Now go, prepare our haven. Yes, brother. What the devil is this? The video feed from the Mark II cuts off here. So... Haven... Yeah... Revan was saying something about that. <laughs> In the beginning, the Patriot system was controlled by four AIs, with JD at the top. One of those AIs was GW. The Patriots thought it had been destroyed, but Liquid was able to use it as cover to slip inside the system. GW was one of the Patriot Cell AIs. It was installed on Arsenal gear. Emma's worm should have put it permanently out of commission. But Liquid somehow recovered and repaired it. I'm guessing JD must be unable to recognize GW, even though it's inside the Patriot system. It's a blind spot. GW was written off as lost while it was still tied in. <coughs> Using it let Liquid interfere with the AI from the inside. He made contact under the guise of Big Boss's genetic code. Even the AI threat detection system was fooled. <coughs> uh, even on the network. <sighs> Free from oversight by the Patriots' AIs. It all makes sense now. That's why they made Arsenal go berserk five years ago. GW was on board. Where is this Haven? Where is their base? Don't worry. Mei Ling is using the position of the Mark II's last transmission to predict the course of Liquid's ship. It's only a matter of time before we find him. <coughs> but that's not all Liquid said. Something about Rex being ready. Rex? You mean... Shadow Moses? <coughs> It's Campbell. The U.S. military's systems are all in Liquid's hands now. The regional systems have all been shut down. Guns are falling silent across the Earth. It's the first total ceasefire in human history. How's the White House responding? The public? The president has yet to make an official announcement. But the media is starting to pick up on it. <coughs> the information's gonna be controlled anyway. Not this time. The war economy is ground to a complete halt. It's tough to play down a crisis of these proportions. War economy-related stocks are already going into a freefall. themselves at the White House right about now. <laughs> In any case, America had better sleep soundly while she still can. Liquid's insurrection is about to begin. The first thing he'll do is try to destroy the system the Patriots built to control the U.S. He's already taken the system. No. Supreme Authority still resides with JD, which the Patriots still command. Which is why Liquid plans to launch a nuclear strike on JD in its orbit. But Liquid only controls SOP, and SOP only controls guns and small firearms. 
Unless he gains supreme authority, Liquid can't use America's nukes and ballistic missiles. So how's he gonna launch this strike? <coughs> Good question. The U.S. converted its nuclear arsenal to reliable replacement warheads two years ago. RRWs. Yes. The core of the RRWs is now completely ID controlled by the SOP system. You'd need supreme authority from JD itself to control them. And they can be shut down remotely in case of an emergency. All the old nukes were pulled out of service when they deployed the replacements. If Liquid can't use the nukes, then... Then what's his plan? That's it. He's going to use Rex. What? Rex was scrapped before the Sons of the Patriot system was implemented. Of course. The rail garden. Indeed. Rex's railgun can launch a stealth nuclear warhead into space unconstrained by the system. In short, it's the only device they have that is able to launch a nuke. Liquid's going to use it to kill JD and deliver the coup de grace to the Patriots' reign. Campbell, where's Rex now? I think you know. A long forgotten base in U.S. territory outside the Patriots' control. The place where Liquid made his debut, his monument, off the Alaskan coast in the Fox Archipelago. Shadow Moses Island. <coughs> if Liquid destroys JD and his GW assumes total control over the system, he'll have the world at his fingertips. And no one will be able to stop him. Not even the Patriots. You are the only ones who can save us now. Snake, I'm counting on you. Defeat Liquid and put an end to his insurrection. Enough, Snake. You can't take any more of this. I'm not dead yet. That's not what I mean. You can't beat Liquid. He's got the Patriot's own control system on his side. Not only are weapons useless, but the U.S. military is in shambles. And even if it weren't, Liquid's got enough men and machines to match it. Snake, we've lost. Otacon, <coughs> we never stood a chance. <laughs> it's not about winning or losing. I know we started this. Let me go. 
go, Sonny. No. Your dialysis isn't done yet. Snake. He's not ready yet.
This is my fight. My destiny. Dr. Emmerich? Mei Ling. I got the results back. It's official. He's on Shadow Moses Island. We lost Metal Gear Mark II's signal along the way, but the ship was headed in the direction of Shadow Moses. This is a picture of the island taken by a civilian imagery satellite. The sea line is rising due to global warming. Have you heard that the entire Fox Archipelago is about to slip into the ocean? The surrounding islands have already been evacuated. Hmm. Liquid's arrival there can only mean one thing. He is going to use Rex. That's how it looks from here. All the Metal Gears after Rex were embedded with system IDs. Then what about Rex? What did Washington do with it? The nuclear disposal facility on Shadow Moses hasn't been touched since the incident. That was nine years ago. The president of ArmsTech and the DARPA chief were killed, and the secretary of defense was arrested. By the time the Shadow Moses incident was over, there wasn't a single person left there who knew what took place. It was as if nothing had ever happened. The data was either falsified or erased, so no traces would be left behind. We were exiled to desk jobs for the same reason. Rex and the nukes should still be where they were nine years ago. Untouched. A forsaken island. A haven. Well, I'd say it's more like a forgotten island. <coughs> and it's sinking too. I thought I'd never go back. It'll take me a while to get there, but I'll be backing you up from aboard the Missouri. She's the only ship in the fleet still able to move, since it was decommissioned before the system was put in place. And why is not that far away? Otacon, you're not wearing your glasses anymore. Oh, I... yeah, I, I switched to contacts. <laughs> we rendezvous at Shadow Moses. Submits to heaven shall live. He who defies heaven shall perish. I have to atone for my past, too. Rex is a beast. Born from my research. Let's go. Shadow Moses awaits.
all right, Snake? I was having that dream again. We're here. Shadow Moses. of there. Head west and find that heliport. I don't see any enemies around here. Okay, we'll go through the door all the way at the back. Otacon, last time around we had a few complications and wound up going through the commander's office in the basement. That's right. I remember now. But there's no need to go all the way down there this time, right? The back door takes us straight where we need to go. Mm -hmm. Good point. Okay then, let's get to the back door. Huh? Snake, that door is locked. How do I open it? Security is shut down altogether. You can't release the lock without activating it. You'll have to log in somewhere. I've got it, Snake. My old office is close by. With the power on, you should be able to unlock the door from there. And if you check the facility records, we can find out Rex's status and who's been in and out. You remember where it is, Snake? Uh, I'm not senile yet. Just to be safe, I'm marking it on your map. You old geezer. <coughs> Snake, the password is 48273. Think you can remember that? I told you, I'm not senile... yet. Snake, I've checked the APU on this floor and engaged the generator. Energy output is low, but it should be enough to power the elevator. Try the elevator and see if it's working. Okay, 
First, go down the central hallway. Don't worry, it's not electrified anymore. Everything looks exactly like I remember it. Except for that wall way in back, anyway. I still can't believe how much damage you caused in such a small space. Ah, the switchboard. Nailed it with a remote control missile to shut down the electric current in the floor. The guidance system in those things takes up so much space, it hardly leaves any room for explosives. Didn't make much of a bang, huh? Hardly. Switchboard's still intact. You're right. The wiring past the switch circuits could still be live. Wait a minute. I'm not gonna get shocked if I walk on this floor, am I? No need to worry. As long as you don't turn the current back on. Check security. forgot. Can you punch it in for me? It's a five-digit number. Nice job. At least your memory hasn't gone bad. up any unpleasant memories, is it? <laughs> I was being attacked by Frank Yeager. Yeah, I remember. If you hadn't shown up when you did, uh, gives me the shivers just thinking about it. Snake, you saved my life. Frank's body. But it 
was me that crippled him in the first place. She must have hated me too. <sighs> we shouldn't have been so trusting. I blame myself too. I helped develop Rex. That's why it was so easy for me to believe her feelings were genuine. But she was only using us to atone for her sins. So what? What did she do to us? You forgot already? She betrayed you. She stole your blood. If that was all, it should have been over and done with in South America. Why'd she join us afterward? Well, I... I uh... She has us come rescue her, and then she turns around and goes straight back to Liquid. Why would she do that? I don't know, Snake. But it looks like she's still with him. What? I just had a look at the security access logs. As I thought, there's people coming and going at frequent intervals. In fact, the records show some recent activity. Look at this. It's an image taken a few hours ago by a surveillance camera up ahead.
Yo, Snake, I finished laundering that real gun you picked up just now. Knock yourself out. It's on the house. Thanks. Time for another bedtime story, Snake. This one's about crying wolf. You don't need me to tell you there's whole nations in Africa tearing themselves apart in the name of ethnic cleansing. Well, she was born into that environment. When she was a little girl, her village was attacked by rival armed factions. Her parents and siblings were slaughtered, and she was left a refugee. She took her last surviving relative, her baby brother, and ran as far as she could away from the war zone. One day, they came across an enemy unit, so she took her brother and hid in an abandoned shack. And then her brother started to cry. She knew that if the soldiers heard the noise, they would find them and kill them both. 
so she wrapped her hand as tight as she could around his mouth. As the footsteps gradually went away, she came back to her senses. Her brother wasn't crying anymore. Horrified, she pulled her hand away, covered in sweat and spit. He wasn't breathing. They say wolves eat their own pups when they die. She was spotted wandering through the thick of battle, carrying her dead brother in her arms. She had visions, too. A wolf walking alongside her. Every night, the wolf would howl and cry, just like her brother did that day. Eventually, she made it to a government-run refugee camp. But by then, her brother's body had rotted away. The camp was crowded with refugees like herself and little children like her brother. Day and night, she was tormented by the cries of babies. The wolf that followed her heard her sorrowful screams and answered. He made his way around the camp, and one by one, he silenced the children. She tried to stop it, but she was powerless to stop the wolf. A few days passed, and on the eve of the enemy's raid, there wasn't a child left. The adults who survived were torn up pretty bad. Of course, there was never any wolf in that camp. She was the one who killed those babies. But she couldn't bring herself to admit it. She couldn't bear the thought of herself going from one baby to the next, howling like a wolf, snuffing out their little lives. And she never did, even as Crying Wolf, a lonely beast forever stalking the battlefield. Snake, fighting with you made Wolf finally accept what she'd done. She was cleansed by you. If the cries she heard of children on the battlefield have been silenced, it's because of you. You ought to be proud. Three down, one to go. All that's left is Mantis. But you should know, Snake, she's been controlling all the other beasts. She's the beast of beasts. Don't let her get her hooks in you. I won't. See you around, Snake. Hold it, Snake. Time to change the disc. I know, I know, it's a pain. But you need to swap disc one for disc two. You see the disc labeled two? Nah. No. Huh? Oh, wait. We're on PlayStation 3. It's a Blu-ray disc. Dual layered, too. No need to swap. Damn it, Otacon. Get a grip. <laughs> yeah, what an age we live in, huh, Snake? Wonder what they'll think of next.
Hop on, Snake. I'll send her up. Afraid so. Unfortunately for you, the railgun is no longer here. Naomi. This place will be your grave, as my queen wishes. The suicide gecko are on their way. Soon. There'll be nothing left of this place. We've been had. Rodagon! Snake, I think I might be able to get it working. I just need some time. Hurry! Mm. I'll leave the rest to you. Naomi! Till they arrive. Come on. I'll take care of Rex. You take Vamp. Kill that monster. Get Naomi back, Snake. Please. Care 
have to die too. Sorry, but I can't die just yet. Then kill me. Snake, this one is mine. You keep those gecko at bay.
This thing might come in handy after all. He was never immortal. His natural healing abilities were enhanced by the nanomachines inside his body. But, after so many battles, he's finally reached his limit. Doctor, ease my pain. <laughs> you something. What is it? I cooked them right. I see. Good for you, Sonny. You finally did it. No, I can't save you. You have to trust me, Dr. Emmer. Give this to him. Not for revenge, but to end his suffering. thing we can do is end it. Snake. Huh. Liquid's down below us. He's stolen the Patriot system, slipped out of their sight, and taken their Ark. Ark? A warship, unfettered by land, law, country, or network. The only place where they are truly released from the shackles of the Patriots. The place where they can be free. Outer Haven. Outer Haven? Liquid plans to launch the nuke from that ship. Uh. Snake. You have been given life, so that you may fulfill your purpose. When all of this is over, you'll have no choice but to accept death. We are given life only so that we can atone for our sins. Your life was created for that very purpose. We all must atone for our own sins. We must not pass them on to the next generation. We must not leave them for the future. That is your true fate. One that even you cannot defy. We're living corpses. Our bodies kept barely alive by nanomachines. Then you... Cancer. I 
I shouldn't even be alive right now. The nanomachines have kept it from progressing. But there's nothing more they can do. With the nanomachines gone, time will unfreeze and begin to flow again. What are you saying? Goodbye.
way! It's not over! Not yet! Liquid! Moses! Where our fates were born, and where yours ends, Snake! Again. Sorry, but that won't work this time. Ha <laughs> 
All these tourists around you. They were asking me which building it was that King Kong was climbing in the movie. I said it was probably the Chrysler building. And then you showed up and started mouthing off. You were like, no, it's the Empire State. I said the Chrysler building was in Godzilla. We started arguing, and I forgot all about the tourists. The next thing we knew, the tourists had gone away. And a week later, I found you again by coincidence out in the base corridor. An amazing coincidence. That night, we went up to the top of the Empire State Building. It was so beautiful. I didn't care anymore who was right. And that was our first date. We watched King Kong in your apartment a bunch of times that night. Didn't sleep till morning.
southward through the Pacific at a speed of 33 knots. The Missouri's falling behind at a rate of about two nautical miles every hour. Can't this thing go any faster? I'm afraid not. This is as fast as she'll go. Liquid's target is JD, a US military satellite disguised as orbital debris. Uh. Haven will have to surface in order to use the railgun. If we can figure out JD's orbit. <clears throat> there. We should be able to predict where Haven's gonna surface. <clears throat> JD is in a synchronous elliptical orbit, so its next perigee should be in. Uh... Oh. Got it! 15 hours, 6 minutes, and 12 seconds. Right. In 15 hours, it's going to be over the Bering Sea, 494 nautical miles from the Bering Strait. Haven knows it, too. They'll be holding position in that area. Did they really have to get that close to launch? The nukes fired by Rex's railgun have a damage radius of approximately 300 meters. The target is a moving satellite that's traveling at 10 kilometers per second. To get the precision they need, they have to get as close as they possibly can. Liquid won't launch his nuke until JD is at perigee. The Missouri can use that time to catch up. Will we make it? Once Haven stops moving, it'll take us an hour to close the gap. After that, the Missouri needs to strike before Haven's launch preparations are complete. This ship was stripped of most of its equipment and she's got no electronic warfare capabilities of any kind. No radar, no high-tech weaponry. We'll have to rely on our own eyes to track the enemy. From the looks of it, Haven is going to use a railgun mounted on the bridge to destroy JD. You'll need to open the cover to launch the nuke. That's our one and only chance to get inside. Inside? Why can't we attack it from here? It wouldn't do any good. As long as Liquid has control of the system, physically destroying GW would still leave supreme authority in his hands. Sons of the Patriots. Yes, Dr. Emmerich is right. That's why we need to destroy GW from the inside before attacking Haven itself. Hmm. Liquid's very own Death Star. All right, everybody, here's the plan. We know Haven will have to surface in order to fire the railgun. When it does, the Missouri will see it. We'll make a quick approach and deliver a strike team. Our goal is twofold. Prevent that nuke from launching and wipe out GW's programming. The enemy relies entirely on electronic means of threat detection. So they won't be able to see the Missouri until they surface. Hakiba. <laughs> we'll launch the strike team from catapults at the exact moment Haven's armored cover opens. They'll then penetrate GW's physical server room and infect it with a worm cluster. But what if they shut down GW before we get in there? Liquid is already entrenched within the Patriots network. He needs to stay there, or destroying JD won't serve him any purpose. They can't afford to have GW shut down. And let's not forget, Liquid will throw everything he's got at stopping the strike team. Exactly. The corridor leading to GW is defended by directed energy weapons that emit certain types of microwaves. Did you say microwaves? That's right. And at that frequency, the waves will start to evaporate any living person within range. A giant microwave oven. You'd have to have a death wish to go in there. Sounds like the perfect job for me. <coughs> Snake, this isn't the time for your stupid jokes. Outside the corridor, liquid soldiers will be out in full force. Inside, there'll be unmanned weapons waiting for us. Where are you getting all this information? You really think there's a way to destroy GW? <coughs> yes, I do. 
She left us something that'll point us in the right direction. Naomi helped with the preparations to stop Haven's launch. Naomi? All of our internal data on Haven came from her. The reason she got on the Nomad with us in the first place was to get close to me. But she ended up turning to Sunny instead. What do you mean? She left her plan in Sunny's hands. This entire operation is based on the data she left us. <coughs> Whose side was she on anyway? <coughs> we'll never know exactly what her true intentions were. But one thing's for sure. She was determined to stop Liquid. Somebody say something positive. Anything. Attention. Listen up. A wise man once wrote, The tongues of dying men enforce attention like deep harmony. Where words are spent, they are seldom spent in vain. Any other questions? <clears throat> yes, Snake? Anybody got a smoke? Snake... So this program, you're saying Sunny wrote it? Actually, only about a third of it is her work. Hmm. Naomi was working on a program to destroy GW, but she couldn't quite finish it, so she handed it over to Sunny. Hmm. Sunny went fishing in my library to see if there was any source code she could use to complete it. Hmm. Eventually, she found some. It was Emma's worm cluster. <coughs> she took my sister's code and worked it into Naomi's program. I didn't have time to look over every single line of code. But what I did see reminded me of Emma. It was like she left traces of herself behind in the structure. But this worm cluster that Sunny created, it's even better than Emma's. Sunny's worm destroys the AI's intellect by triggering apoptosis in the cells. Once uploaded into GW, it should do some real damage. <coughs> Snake, you ever think about quitting? Why? It's not like I've got my health to worry about. Yourself. 
Why don't we get somebody else to go? There's no need for you to do it. I still have things left to do. <laughs> Besides smoke. still got things to do myself. And I don't even smoke. This is my first real engagement. I see. Your point? At first, getting assigned to this ship was a big letdown for me. But the inaction was kind of a relief, too. Captain... I... I'm scared. It's okay. I'm scared, too. This is also my first time. But I'm not going to let it get to me. Because I'm more scared of what'll happen if I run away. Nobody is going to die on my watch. This ship is going back to Hawaii in one piece. That, I promise. Right. Thank you. in no shape to fight. Best to let him rest. Right. Without the system to protect them, everybody's losing their nerve. They say SOP's after effects are so bad that a lot of soldiers are deserting. The only people I have left to rely on are Marilyn. Him. Kind of an unknown quantity, isn't he? I hooked him up with a 9-ID M82. Fancy meeting you here. What are you doing here? I laundered these guys' ideas, then issued them new naked weapons. Including that catapult you're gonna be riding. Business has been slow ever since Liquid got his hands on the system. His extra orders stopped coming in. Now that all the weapons all over the world are locked, the only one still looking to fight would be you and yours. They tell me it's not economical to replace all that useless equipment on the battlefield with my stuff. 
so I made an extra special trip out here just for you. Drevan, do you even have the slightest idea what's going on here? Of course I do. See, when it comes down to it, the world's like this soda here. Once the bubbles are gone, I ain't got no use for it. It's worth nothing. I'm on the side of whoever needs me the most. You dig? If you need anything, just say the word. I'm setting up shop here for a spell. Enjoy it. Could be your last. It is. I'm all out. Like that last smoke will have to wait after all. Later. Hey, here. Huh? Oh, oh, thanks. <laughs> Warship, Outer Haven, is a modified version of an Arsenal gear model stolen from the Patriots. Inside, it's crawling with Irving and other unmanned weapons. According to Naomi's data, Haven is crewed by a battalion of enhanced soldiers, each called from the best the PMCs have to offer. If Liquid succeeds in destroying JD and gaining control of the Patriot system, he'll make Haven his flagship, and his PMCs will spread like wildfire across the globe. And then, mankind's armed subjugation will begin. Captain, Haven sighted. Prepare to fire, main gun! <laughs>
shotgun is exposed. There it is. A naked nuke. Let's finish it, Snake. Let this be our last battle. If we're responsible for liquid sins, then the onus is ours to bear. Right. Enemy, moving to intercept! Maintain full speed! Failure will spell doom for the human race. You've got to stop them from using that railgun. Then annihilate GW.
Meryl.
Get out of my body. Forgive me. Set me free! the last beast. That doll you just picked up lets you manipulate anybody who's got nano machines in them. Sounds like something the devil's cooked up, if you ask me. Mantis came from South America. She was born and raised in a country racked by never-ending civil wars. Her village was attacked by enemy forces and burned to the ground. This was when she was still a little girl. Hunted by enemy death squads, she was separated from her family. She barely managed to escape with her life. Ended up in the basement of this one building. It was full of corpses that had been dumped there. Almost all of them had been tortured to death. She was petrified with fear. And then, she heard the sound of heavy boots on the floor above her, followed by shrieking screams. The kind that would make every hair on your body stand straight up. 
she had stumbled across a makeshift torture chamber. Somebody locked the door, and she was trapped. It was dark, it was dank, and it was full of a wretched stench. She couldn't sleep with the screams of torture victims all around her. All she could do was sit curled up in one corner of the room, trembling. A week passed, then ten days. She managed to keep hydrated by drinking the filthy water pooled up on the floor, but there was no food. Being trapped in that kind of place, half crazy from hunger, did a serious number on her mind. Did you know female mantises eat their mates? The screams went on day and night. She covered her ears, but it didn't help. And then, she was saved. By a little black mantis that taught her how to block out the screams, how to plug up her inner ears. What the hell are you talking about? I'm saying, Snake, that when she couldn't stand the hunger any longer, she started feeding on the corpses. But only the male ones. She didn't realize who was doing it. In her mind, it was a female mantis devouring her mates. It was like one big twisted waking dream. There was no mantis, of course. It was all a hallucination. Nothing more than some story spun by another person she created inside. Her unstable mind was what made her so vulnerable. Later, they ripped out what was left of her psyche with drugs and hypnosis and implanted the persona of Psycho Mantis. It wasn't her will that controlled the B&Bs. It was Psycho Mantis, half assimilated into her soul, pulling the strings. Screaming Mantis was just another puppet. Anyway... She survived several weeks down in that hellhole and finally got back to the surface. But the screams in her head didn't subside. They would always be with her. Only this time, they weren't real. The inner earplugs didn't work anymore. The Black Mantis had disappeared. There was no place left to escape. Which is why she was always screaming. To drown out the ones in her own head. But it's over now. You freed Mantis from that dark nightmare. Mm. The last of the beasts. You got it, pal. Well, I'm done playing storyteller for a while. Now get going. GW is waiting. And this time, you get to make up the ending. Where's Johnny?
enough is enough. You can't take any more of this. It's not about winning or losing. Tons of dying men enforce attention like these on where words are spent. They are seldom said. Why don't we get somebody else? It's our duty. I've got nothing to lose. You were the lightning in that rain. I can still shine in the darkness. Time to do your duty. Failure to spell doom for the human race. Go! since Shadow Moses, when I first laid eyes on you. Meryl, marry me. You've got a hell of a sense of timing. What do you say? I have to say, no. You'd rather stay single? Okay, but we don't have to make it official. No. Well, how about we just move in together then? Nope. Marry me. 
Sure. It'd be my pleasure.
your life a living hell. It's my duty to put an end to all of this. All right. I'll make sure they don't get through. Stay with me, Snake. Hold on until we insert the virus.
This is GW. It's like a graveyard in here. Otacon, can you do it? Leave it to me.
stopping at GW. Is it removing the other clones? No. Wait. I don't believe this. Naomi. Otakon, what is it? JD is being erased. GW is a conduit to annihilate the entire AI network. It's set to destroy all four AIs, along with JD, the core that tied them all together. I've set this video to play back once they're all gone. Sons of the Patriots was only the beginning. The Patriots were planning to use nanomachines to implement the system over the entire population. I had an obligation to stop it. With a little help from Sunny. She helped me. She believed her talents could help you all put GW to rest. What she created was an anti-AI fox die. But this virus's name is Fox Alive. It's the conceptual opposite of the nanomachines that I created all those years ago. We wish to free the captured foxes, to let them run free in the wild. to be delivered after you've died. How? If you're listening. I'm sorry. Sorry I deceived you. It hurt me more than anything else. Lying to you like that. I wanted to apologize to you before, but I never got the chance. Naomi. And yet, in the end, you helped me feel the joy of living. Thank you. Come. 
You've earned your rest. The rose petal is about to fall. Get a medic. Rise and shine, Snake. Look, the war is over. Why? You, you could have stopped us. I stopped you. Why would I want to do that? This is just as I'd hoped things would end. Back before Father's time, before Zero gave birth to the Patriots. The US, China, and the Soviet Union formed a secret pact. The organization they created was called the Philosophers. Through two world wars, it spread its roots and extended its reach. After that, the Philosophers splintered, and factions began to squabble over the fortune they'd amassed. They called it the Philosophers' Legacy. A massive cache of funds that would later provide the foundation for Zero's Patriots. Zero sought to use his riches to achieve world domination. Our father, Big Boss, sought to free himself from that chokehold. His dream was to create an army of free citizens, one that answered to no government. Outer heaven. But he failed because of you. Nine years ago, I tried to free us from the control of our genes. Four years later, our dear brother Solidus sought to free us from the control of the Patriots' means. All of that, all of it, was nothing more than a process of trial and error, the end result of which is Outer Haven. To be free from Sons of the Patriots, the ultimate form of external control imposed on the Patriots' soldiers. Free from Fox Die. Free from the system. Free from ID control. Our minds free from their prisons. That is the haven I've yearned for.
A beginning, Snake. America were to sin into chaos. It'll be the Wild West all over again. No law, no order. This fire will spread across the world. The people will fight. And through battle, they will know the fullness of life. <sighs> Sonny's program destroyed JD's brain, but left the brain stem intact. She analyzed Naomi's black box and separated the Patriot's control system from the vital lifelines of society. Water, air, electricity, food, medicine, communication, transportation. She cut off the Patriot's control while preserving modern civilization. Maybe it was her way of avenging Olga, her mother. Or maybe she wanted to shape the future into her own ideal image. Or maybe it was just one big defragmentation. Fox alive. The AI is truly living thing. The Patriot's reign has crumbled away. And still, our civilization, a civilization that has thrived on war since the dawn of time, lives on. I wonder if we did the right thing. Naomi. What did we lose? What did we say? Congratulations.
Colonel. You're going to walk me down the aisle. You're not angry anymore. Oh, I'm still mad. But now, you've got a chance to win me over. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to join these two in holy matrimony. Let us give thanks for the life they will soon share. And pray they have love everlasting. Now, let's all send this new team on their first mission. Huh? <laughs> hey, huh? go on, do it. I... Oh, oh. <laughs> Just in time, Trip. and I brought gifts. A shower of flowers, compliments of Drebin. And a little something extra for me. Okay. <laughs> 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 
Where's Snake? Uh, who knows? That guy always keeps you waiting. Jack, how are you feeling? Do you mind if I sit down? Jack. Don't shut me out. I need you to listen to me. What do you want? Come to laugh at me? Oh, no. Look. Look at the boy. He's yours. I don't have any kids. <sighs> He's your son. You said miscarriage. I lied. I had a healthy baby boy. <gasps> Roy pretended to be my husband to protect me and our son. Only until you completed your mission to shield us from Patriot eyes. What? <clears throat> he didn't even tell Meryl. He sacrificed everything, even his family, to protect us. I'm sorry, Jack. I wanted to tell you. So he's really... John, aren't you going to say hello? Scare. I 
think you're cool. Kind of like a comic book superhero. Scene from Beauty and the Beast. Don't say that. You're no beast. You're my husband and his father. And me, I'm going to do my very best to be the wife and mother this family deserves. changed. Our time has ended. Our war is over. But there's one more thing I must do. Day, day, day. 
Nothing beats a stiff drink, huh? I didn't know you drank. I thought it was strictly soda for you. Not like I never touched the stuff. Soda just agreed with the nanos better. <laughs> the nano machines break down alcohol before it has a chance to get you drunk. So, that explains it. No need to hold back anymore, huh? Yeah, well, it ain't all sunshine and rainbows. A lot of folks lost their entire sense of being the moment SOP went offline. You mean SOPS? I heard some people are going through withdrawals. SOP syndrome. Yep. SOP kept more than just alcohol under control. Those poor slobs are virtually naked now. From what I hear, over 10% are showing symptoms. I guess getting rid of the Patriots won't solve all our problems overnight. You, uh, probably already suspected this, but I'm not actually an employee of AT Security. Huh? The Patriots raised me to be a gun locker. <laughs> the Patriots? My earliest memories are of the LRA. They kidnapped me, forced me to fight. Yep, you're staring at a former child soldier. My parents, brothers and sisters, all killed in the war. Guess that makes me what you call a war orphan. After that, the Patriots picked me up and brought me into the family business. I was dreaded. Number 893. There's a whole lot of pawns like me all over the world. How do you suppose I laundered guns like I did? Because <laughs> they let me. In fact, I was under strict orders to back you guys from the start. You what? <sighs> hey, man. Don't take it personal. I wasn't the only one under their orders. Huh? Huh. <laughs> Meryl and... They probably never realized it themselves, but... Rat Patrol Team Zero One. Obviously, Liquid's plot was a threat to the Patriots. So they planned to have you guys take care of me. Didn't turn out quite how they planned, though, did it? Yeah, well, I don't think they expected you to crash their system and wipe them out. So, does that mean you're out of a job now? <laughs> Are you kidding? I got the dread in. All the Drebbins in the world are in on it. From now on, we're in business for ourselves. We are pawns no more. Easy there. The White House might have lost its taste for unilateralism, started to rebuild. But there's a lot of failed states out there that went bankrupt from their PMC habits, and they owe a shitload of money. Now, only question is, who's going to pick up the tab? I'm sure these new governments will try and keep it under control with PMC corporate reform laws, but it ain't going to be good enough. They all sunk up to their eyeballs in the war economy. Might not be a new world order, but the old order under the war economy is gone for good. I'm guessing the UN is gonna be more important than ever, what with multilateralism and all. A certain president said it best back during the Cold War. 
For in the development of this organization rests the only true alternative to war. Then again, the UN itself is just an old 20th century relic. And if you think about it, when you look at its history, it ain't that different from the Patriots. Ah, uh, that's right. The nano machines used to keep you sober. Crush. Mix. Burn. Repeat. Hey, Uncle Hal. Can I give him the Mark III? Huh? He's kinda a new friend. <laughs> he lives near here. We can't understand each other's language, but we're having fun. <laughs> He's my very first outside friend. <laughs> really? That's great. <laughs> Sonny, it's okay if you want to live outside now. It's your life. There are other havens out there. The sun looks so pretty. Sunny. I like it outside. Uncle Hal, when is Snake coming back? Snake? Is sick. So he went on a trip to help him get better. We're not going with him? No. He needs to be alone. Time to rest. Are you crying, Uncle Hal? No. I'm not crying.
My son, I'm not here to fight. Or should I call you brother? What? It's over. Time for you to put aside the gun and live. After him, were convinced that Solidus was me. I was implanted with nano machines, kept in a state of eternal sleep by JD and the proxy AI. They had me sealed away completely, not only my physical body, but my will too. Technology was similar to what they used to restrain the B&B &B members you encountered. For me to wake again, the system had to be destroyed, one way or another. Ocelot and Eva wanted two things, to bring me back to life and to end the Patriots. That meant destroying the AI and killing the man. JD and Zero. Right before you uploaded the virus into GW, the way to JD was opened, but only through the physical manifestation of GW. That's when we finally learned the location of this man, Zero. For me, and for them, for Naomi, nothing was more important. And it was for that that they put their grand scheme into motion. Eva stole my body from them and reconstructed it by replacing the missing parts with pieces from liquid and solidus. And Ocelot, in order to fool the system, used nanomachines and psychotherapy to transplant Liquid's personality onto his own. He used hypnotic suggestion to turn himself into Liquid's mental doppelganger. For all our advances in nanotechnology, information and genetic control, they've never managed to control people at will, let alone turn one person totally into another. Under certain conditions, someone can be made to play a specific role. Act like someone else. Cats do love to play as snakes. It all started with him. Zero. Zero grew old, and by the end his patriots were being run by a network without shape or form. What do you mean, without shape or form? The proxies were only one small part of the vast cycle that Zero created. The corporations, for-profits, and research institutions that comprise the military-industrial complex were part of it too. 
They operated on budgets automatically allotted to them by the proxies. Accounts maintained by the Patriots. The network covered everything from weapons, R&D, and investment to production and marketing. It encompassed the people, the companies, even the laws that protect them. Politics and economics became nothing more than iterations of the same oppressively uniform system. I don't think anyone realized that it was all a setup, a mere set of norms. The Patriots were those norms, a neural network reduced to its simplest form. That's what they really represented. Uniformity without individual will, without change. But then one day, those norms suddenly deviated from that pattern and underwent a mutation. It was like the birth of a new life form. The system found a new way to propagate itself. War. The norms the Patriots had crafted for their unified state quickly became dependent on a single business, the war economy. Meanwhile, the political cause of creating a cleaner, safer battlefield provided a convenient catalyst. By then, the system was no longer being steered by Zero's will or anyone else's. It was then that the norms manifested as AIs, the inheritors of Zero's will, began to reproduce and take on a life of their own. Zero's original intent was to carry on the boss's will and establish a unified world state, an inside world. But his successors failed to carry on his will. Eventually, JD became the very age itself propagating its will as it pleased, and this age chose to act through economics instead of nation-states. Powered by the industrial and digital revolutions that came before it, this age gave birth to a twisted economic revolution, a battlefield revolution. It created a new world without substance. In this new world, there were no ideologies, no principles, no ideals, not even the thing she treasured most, loyalty. There was only the war economy. It was a colossal error in judgment, one zero couldn't possibly have foreseen. With the American system in a state of collapse, the Patriot society has reverted to a blank slate. This man was the source of it all. And he doesn't even realize it. He's completely unaware of the fact that he led the world to the brink of ruin. Even with so much bad blood between us, it's funny, now that I'm actually face to face with him again, the hatred is gone. All I feel is a deep sense of longing and pity. Did Zero really hate me? Or did he fear me? Too late to ask him now. The original members, paramedic, Sigint, Eva, Ocelot, they've all passed on. Only Zero is left. Everything has its beginning, but it doesn't start at one. It starts long before that, in chaos. The world is born from zero. 
The moment zero becomes one is the moment the world springs to life. One becomes two, two becomes ten, ten becomes one hundred. Taking it all back to one solves nothing. So long as zero remains, one will eventually grow to one hundred again. And so, our goal was to erase Zero. Even the mighty Patriots began with a single man. That one man's desires grew huge, bloated, absorbed technology, began to manipulate the economy. We realized too late that we had created a beast. We had helped turn Zero into 100. His sin was ours. And for that reason, I'm taking it upon myself to send Zero back to nothing. back to zero as well. You erased me two times before. Today will mark the third. A fox die, zero planted in you. It's already begun eating away at my body. The truth is, a fox dying you is what killed Eva and Ocelot. What are you talking about? Naomi, she told me everything. What's wrong? They did it again. They used you to kill me. Oh, oh. The Patriots know their proxies in order to bury us. They did it again. In the end, they're no more than a program. Oh. All they can do is repeat the same pattern over and over again. Oh. Oh. Do me a favor, will you? Take me over to her. Oh. There's one more thing Naomi wanted me to tell you. About the oh, old fox die in your body. The one that mutated. The new fox die uh, inside you continues to multiply at the same time.
same time, it is preventing the old, mutated fox die from reproducing. The new fox die is uprooting the old. Naomi confirmed it in her follow-up. The mutants are receding. Before long, they'll be gone entirely. Does that mean the mutant strain won't cause an epidemic? Oh! It will only live as long as you do. <laughs> but even then, the process will just repeat itself. One day, the new fox die too will start to mutate and become a new threat. But that is, if you manage to live that long. Am I going to die? Everyone dies. You can't stop it. You can't run away from it. Let me tell you something. Don't. Don't waste the life you have left fighting. Never thought of you as a son, but I've always respected you as a soldier and as a man. If you'd been in my place back then, maybe you wouldn't have made the same mistakes that I did. Ever since the day I killed the boss with my own hands, I was already dead.
it's almost time for me to go. And with me, the last ember of this fruitless war dies out. And at last, those old evils will be gone. Once the source of evil returns to zero, a new one, a new future will be born. That new world is yours to live in, not as a snake, but as a man. Zero and I, liquid and solidus, we all fought a long, bloody war for our liberty. We fought to free ourselves from nations and systems and norms and ages. But no matter how hard we tried, the only liberty we found was on the inside trapped within those limits. The boss and I may have chosen different paths, but in the end, we were both trapped inside the same cage. Liberty. Nobody's tool now. No one's toy. You are no longer a prisoner of fate. You are no longer a seed of war. Oh, it's time for you to see the outside world with your own eyes. Your body and your soul are your own. Forget about us. Live for yourself.
is gone. Isn't it? Snake, wait up. You forgot these. Hmm. No thanks. I'm quitting. Snake. These things will kill you. Where will you go? Our fight is finished. There's nothing left for us to do. No. There's one thing I still have to do. I have to see this age off. See what the future brings. It sounds good to me. I'll go with you. Huh. Otacron. I'm gonna be dead soon. You don't have to come. You said it yourself, Snake. There's nothing inside you can pass on to the next generation. No genes. No memes. You're man-made. You're a beast. I know. A blue rose. There won't be any happy Beauty and the Beast ending for me. What little time I have left will be spent living as a beast. A shadow of the inside. Of the old age. Exactly. That's why you need me. As a witness. A witness? Yeah. Someone on the outside to bear witness to your final days. Someone to pass on your story. Not that I'm the only witness. But I'll remember everything you were. And stick with you to the end. Otacon. Besides, you wouldn't let me suffer Sonny's eggs alone, would you? again. So, who is David Hayter? <laughs> oh, well, I'm... Accomplished actor, screenwriter, voice of a generation. <laughs> well, I... Citizen of the world. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I never... Ripped from the comfortable childhood in Canada, thrown into the turbulent waters of adolescence in Kobe, Japan. How did you stay afloat? You mean... You mean in high school? Uh, well, my dad got uh, transferred overseas, and um, it was a really excellent experience, actually. I, I was really grateful for it. Grateful. What is your biggest secret, David? Pardon me? You can tell us. Oh, well, it's not much of a secret, but I, um, uh, I have a tattoo of Kobe behind my ear. Tattoo? Splendid! Yeah, it's... I mean, it's not terribly big. What are you wearing? I, what do you mean? Why are you here? Oh, well, I was hoping to promote my new movie. I'm just coming off of the set. No, David Hayter. Why here, wearing an eye patch? Oh, the eye patch. Uh, this is pretty cool, actually. Mm. Gives me uh, real-time information and, and uh, you know, weather, traffic reports. Um, Actually, watching a baseball game as we, uh, as we speak. Oh, really? What drives you? What are your dreams? <sighs> well, you know, I'd have to say my dream project. Let your dreams drive you. Oh, a message of hope to today's young people from David Hayter. Mm. I, 
never actually said that. 